Okay, so good morning, everybody. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, dear students, or my colleagues and my friends back here for uh, this discussion and uh, presentations. Today, as you know, we have the whole presentations will be uh, in. It will be kind of hybrid, both. I mean hybrid in terms of that we are present here in this in this room. Uh, on the other way, we are of course online. We have currently there are let's say 16, 17 uh, connected, and I think maybe there will be more uh, during the presentations. Uh, and another hybrid form is that the presentations will be in the speaking form. It will be in Czech language or Slovak language, and uh, the presentations will be. Usually, or most of them will be in English. Uh, I will try to translate the most important parts, not for you who are from Czech Republic, but we have a lot of guests who are uh, speaking English. So uh, I will translate the most important things, uh, especially in the second part of this event, which is uh, the discussion part. So in the discussions, we will discuss different topics. Today, the topic is inclusive and sustainable organizations, reality or a myth. I uh, I took this uh, this name or this title from my colleague from uh, the University of Sarajevo, Jasna Kovacevic. Uh, unfortunately, she couldn't be here to present today because Bosnia and Herzegovina is still on the list, on the blacklist of uh, those countries that if you are traveling to Czech Republic, you need to stay in the quarantine, which means that she would stay the whole time here in quarantine. She couldn't be presenting her topic. So uh, we invite and we welcome uh, Jasna, uh, Jasna Kovacevic here in Microsoft Teams. Welcome our other guests, uh, which are today, we have three men, Jasna, a strong woman, and uh, three men here. Uh, the first one who will be presenting is Danny Kosor from CESA Politik. The second one is uh, Maria Janov from Maris Mills. And the third one will be representing the organization uh, Rosen. Uh, and it is your colleague, actually, because he's one of our students, one of our uh, very skilled students, and he's part of the CSR Mendel, our volunteer. And uh, he's representing, as I said, organization Rosen Nachina. <laughs> and we will start with the presentation of our guests who are present here. If you uh, don't mind, and uh, then we will give uh, give uh, uh, the space for Jasna. Jasna, is that okay for you? Yep. Okay. So, uh, so right now I will invite. I will invite the first speaker. Then I'm going to ask you. I know it's a little bit earlier, but still. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Run the presentation. Okay, please in the chat, uh, those who are those who are listening uh, online, can you hear us? Just please confirm. And write it in the chat because we probably can't hear you. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. And we will share the presentation or share our screen. Part is yours, and let me know uh, which kind or which parts I'm supposed to translate. Okay. Uh, okay. Vás přivítal vlastně, nebo já možná sám sebe na vašem půdě. Tím asi, tím asi začnu díky moc, že tady můžu být. A já jsem zde jako sour a jsem ředitel sociální společnosti, sociálního podniku Podbřík. A dneska si v krátkosti budeme vykládat o unikátním projektu, který propojuje sociální podniky s korporátami. Uh, Zdeněk Kosor je the uh, representative, je director of the, uh, of the social enterprise, social enterprise politik uh, CSR, and he would like to present a very unique project today, how to uh, how to uh, connect together the enterprises with the social enterprises, how they could work together. Cool. Uh, 
První věc, takový představení nás, nebo dvojí, tady je první, kolik říká, kolik říká příští rok oslaví 10 let a s tím, že fungujeme teda v sociálním podnikání. A mě by zajímalo, jestli víte, co je to sociální podnikání. It was a question about social enterprise. Do you know what is social enterprise? Tak pokud to nevíte, tak máte úplně stejný přehled, jako máte v zhruba tyto 90 naší společnosti. A i proto vlastně děláme spoustu aktivit, abychom to změnili. If you don't know, you are probably uh, on the same way as, uh, as 90 of our society, because they don't know as well. And we would like to do everything uh, to change this stuff, to change this situation. Dneska si o pár věcech, co pro to děláme, povíme. Snažíme se totiž společnost Polířík CSR se snažit totiž i trošku zvedat povědomí o sociální podnikání. Ale když řeknu dvě, tři věci základní, které byste si měli spojit se, s označením sociální podnik, tak jsou to, je to ta věc, že podnik zaměstnává nad 50 handicapovaných, když to řeknu jednoduše, kolegů. Část zisku vrací zpátky do společnosti a rozvíjí své zaměstnance pomocí psychosociální podpory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so quite tough to- topic now to translate. However, I will deal with this because I know the situation in Czech Republic. And uh, yeah, the college is trying to uh, increase the awareness about uh, about social enterprises generally in the Czech Republic in the world. And uh, the, uh, what is actually a social enterprise? The, the, the thing is that you need to More than 50 of uh, your employees has to be from the uh, from uh, let's say vulnerable or uh, dis- uh, disadvantaged groups. Uh, you need to return uh, some kind of the profits back to the to the company. Uh, and uh, you said the last thing was uh, yeah about the psych- psychosociological support for the employees. Tak. Um... To, co vlastně děláme my konkrétně, nebo obecně si myslím, že budete znát pojem, jako jsou třeba chráněná dílna. V České republice funguje cirka 3700 podniků, které fungují na takzvaném chráněném trhu práce. A zase zjednodušeně těchto 3700 podniků zhruba a společností splňuje tu podmínku, že zaměstnává na poloviční většinu handicapovaných. A necelých 180 z nich najdete v adresáři Českého sociálního podnikání, který spravuje MPSV, Ministerstvo práce a sociálního a sociální věcí. A ty se přihlásili vlastně k principům sociálního podnikání. Takže když to zhrnu, máme 3800 podniků v Česku, které jsou na chráněném trhu práce a z nich se 180 přihlásilo k principům sociálního podnikání. To jsou třeba ty tři, o kterých jsme mluvili předtím. Yeah, we have currently uh, approximately 3,800 enterprises on the so-called protected labor market, uh, which is inherently for those groups which are uh, working with, uh, with the disabled people or with people uh, who are disadvantaged. And from this uh, number, there are 180 or how many? Uh, 180. 180. Yeah, 180. Yeah, 180 enterprises who call themselves a social enterprises. Ty plní vlastně principy, je to několik principů sociálního podnikání a jsou to třeba ty tři, o kterých jsme se bavili, jako je na poloviční většině na 50%, na 50% OZP, mají propracovat sociální podporu a vrací část zisku zpátky do firmy. To je rozdíl mezi nimi a mezi většinou. Yeah, these 180 uh, companies, they are actually uh, fulfilling all the terms that we mentioned before with the rules 50% and so on. Uh, so this is the, the main difference between them and the rest of the, of the companies who are on the protected labor market. Určitě znáte ve svém okolí spoustu třeba chráněných dílen a podobně. Naprostá většina těch podniků z těch 3800, které jsou na chráněném druhu práce, se věnuje třeba té jednodušší výrobě nebo pracují třeba v security, jsou to úklidové firmy. To je taková, takový obecný obrázek, co vlastně dělají podniky z chráněného druhu práce. Usually the work uh, or uh, what they focus on uh, on the labor market is uh, uh, something, uh, let's say, easier, easier stuff such as cleaning, such as security and so on. A my děláme něco úplně jiného. 
A to je to, že my jsme si řekli, že chceme zkusit najít takovou práci, která handicapovaným přinese dobře, dobrý peníze, dobrou výplatu a zároveň jim přinese možnost posunu a získávání nových zkušeností. A proto naše společnost funguje vlastně v, jako dodavatel korporátních společností, jako jsou třeba banky anebo, nebo pojištění. Mm-hmm. Security, facility. A příležitost kariérního růstu. Společnost Polibřík má několik sociálních podniků a vy jim, že teď je tady, to jsou vlastně jejich brandy. Uh, yeah, I forgot to say that uh, their employees are working, for example, in the banking sector. So that's the, that's the difference. They have different brands, uh, which you can see here uh, on the slide. Uh, Ka- každý z těch podniků se uh, věnuje jinému typu práce. Od jednoduché administrativy až pod třeba složitější podporu uh, bankovních systém. Uh-huh. Each of these enterprises or each of these brands is, uh, is working uh, a little bit differently. Třeba práce se softwarem. Když ty oblasti, ve kterých my působíme, zhrneme, tak je vidíte tady, je to podpora Bitcoin, Scarcity Material Service. A banking insurance a logistika. Mm-hmm. So this is uh, if we conclude what we are doing. Uh, takže ta naše myšlenka je taková, že uh, můžeme najít, uh, že handicapovaní uh, mohou opravdu uh, dělat i práci, která je uh, složitější, kde je potřeba větší, uh, větší odpovědnosti. A uh, my tady tomuhle říkáme handicap na ruby, protože se snažíme ukázat, že je to tak, že korporátní společnosti potřebují nové kapacity a ty najdou na trhu, na pracovním trhu handicapovaný. Čili nepatří jenom do jednoduché práci, ale zvládnou i složitější práce. A tomu říkáme handicap na trhu. Tak, teď se podíváme na pár obrázků od nás, jak to vypadá. Týmy, ve kterých vlastně my fungujeme, tak je to třeba jednoduchý back office, nebo tady kolegyně třeba pracuje na oddělení finančních trhů. Tam jsou třeba základy, nebo třeba základy pro programování. Mm-hmm. So this is a simple back office, and that's, uh, that's uh, even more complicated, some financial markets uh, um, where they need some programming and other stuff. Co je pro nás hodně, hodně důležité, tak je to, že i náš overhead je složen z velké části vlastně z OZP, zhruba 60 našeho overheadu. Managementu, který se stará o naše handicapované kolegy, tak má vlastně handicap, jsou lidi, kteří mají také handicap. To je pro nás důležité, aby jsme ukázali i kolegům vlastně z těch nižších pozic, třeba z back office, že mají možnost kariérního růstu buď u nás, anebo u našich partnerů, co jsou banky. A vedle těch věcí, o kterých jsme se bavili, co jsou specifika sociálního podniku, tak je to opravdu extrémní podpora uh, těch lidí. Jedna z nich třeba je, že máme firmní vůz, který jsme koupili ze zisku společnosti, žádný dotace, jenom ze zisku společnosti, uh, který třeba svážíme uh, lidi, kteří mají uh, problémy s pohybovým studiem u nás. Uh, where 
they uh, collect people, uh, their employees, to get them uh, to their to their office, and they uh, they gain this not from donation but from their profit, which is very important to know. Uh, já to si další podpora, kterou jim dáváme na rámec, tak je třeba Colibri Fond, kde si můžou zažádat v případě, že mají třeba nečekaný výdaj, jako je, že potřebují, potřebují třeba přispět na léky speciální nebo nějakou kompenzační pomůcku. Tak, budeme dál. Když zhrnu to, o čem jsme si vlastně vykládali do posud a o čem je naše společnost, společnost Kolibřík zaměstnává 125 zaměstnanců, z nich je 85% s handicapem, jsme zhruba na pěti místech České republiky a máme nějaký systém kooperace mezi korporátem a sociálním podnikem. I think there is no need to translate it because it's, everything is on the slide. So this is the conclusion of uh, what the Hague actually said. A samozřejmě tady jsou třeba některé někteří našich partnerů ze kterými a organizací, ze kterými spolupracujeme. Down on the presentation you can see their partners and organizations they work with, they cooperate with. Krátko si se můžeme podívat, jak třeba pracujeme s našimi zaměstnanci i v rámci benefitů. Tam uvidíte rozdíl mezi sociálním podnikem a třeba běžnou firmou. Benefity máme rozdělené vlastně do tří, do tří částí. Uh, přičemž uh, ta poslední uh, extra bonus ta je ta, kterou znáte z typických uh, firm, je tam uh, z klasických firm, je tam třeba uh, nějaká partnerský slevy, uh, 13. plat uh, partnerie. Yeah, the benefits are, uh, are divided in three parts. The last one is what you probably know from uh, normal or regular enterprises, so cafeteria, salaries and uh, some, some, uh, some benefits, uh, such as uh, mobile and cell phone and so on. Uh, Tady už se dostáváme do takových specifických sociálních podniků, takže tahle část benefitů už podporuje naše, naše zaměstnance. Třeba jim pomáháme formou bezkulečné půjčky, pomáháme jim třeba s exekucemi, ale co je hodně důležité, je, jak se mi vlastně spadá psychosociální podpora, kde máme pracovníka, který s nimi konkrétně řeší jejich, jejich problémy. The second part is even more specific. There are more specifics, but I will uh, I will point one specific, which is very important. It's the psychological part of it, uh, where they have a special employee who's taking care of the disabled people, giving them a, a psychological support. No, a v té první části to je vlastně to podle toho podle téhle benefitu poznáte, uh, jak vypadá vlastně typická pozice, kterou my hledáme, uh, nebo kterou my, my nabízíme. První věc je, že děláme práci na míru. To je strašně důležitý. Podle toho je tam třeba volba oblasti. Máme vlastně krátké, různé krátké oblasti. Přizpůsobujeme i navýšený počet dnů placeného volba častým návštěvám lékařů. Máme HR helpingu a tohle už vlastně konkrétně tenhle ten sloupec už je o tom, že přizpůsobujeme práci na míru. To jsme taky odlišní od klasické společnosti. Yeah, actually their job positions are really specialized for uh, the people who they are employing. For a specific concrete person, it is, it is person, personalized, let's say, and uh, they would like to give them support in the HR. They have HR help, uh, help link or where they can call for support. Uh, what else do you have? Um, some uh, salaries which can be paid uh, one week um, earlier. Um, what else? Um, HR helping now. Už to může, aby se třeba k nám dostali z nějaký větší dát pro plácení třeba cesty. Ta nejdůležitější věc, pokud zhrnu to, co děláme, je to, že se nám společně s naším partnerem vlastně ČSOB podařilo najít práci pro 90 lidí, celkem máme 125, ale zhruba 90 lidí pracuje na projekty ČSOB kdy vlastně banka vyčlenila část svých uh, činností, kterou udělali sami zdraví zaměstnanci a dali je do uh, sociálního podniku. A tady tahle ta výše těch 90 uh, 
míst, které jsme díky tomu vytvořili. To je hodně unikátní věc, která vlastně ukazuje, že handicapování zvládnou, že handicapování zvládnou i náročnější práci. Je to unikátní spolupráce, která vlastně v Česku, v Česku není. The living cooperation is uh, with the bank uh, Chenso Be. Uh, actually, uh, they have 125 employees, and from this number, they have 90 or 95 employees working, 90 employees working for this bank. Which means that uh, the bank had to create a special uh, space, special, uh, special. Uh, no, uh, I will say it, uh, a little bit differently. The bank had these positions only for people who were, let's say, healthy. Who didn't have any problems, but after then they they had to uh, they had to uh, transform the positions into the disabled positions, and they want to show that actually even disabled people can work as as normal normal healthy people the same way in banking positions. Uh, there is actually not so. Is it is it hard? Uh, is it is it hard to get yeah. to accommodate the position for uh, for uh, disabled people in banking sector? Uh, Odstatně uh, není, když uh, protože my vlastně jsme schopni najít uh, takové uh, OZP, které mají takový handicap, který je slučitelný s tou prací. Takže když jsme to otočili, a tak jsme vlastně zjistili, že OZP zaměstnanci opravdu vedou pro nic široký spektrum těch činností. To put the employee right just in the, to this position to fit in there and so on. So. Uh, tenhle ten koncept je natolik unikátní, že jsme zbudili loni uh, zájem i uh, vlastně z, z různých míst. Měli jsme u nás na návštěvě třeba u Richterovou současnou uh, zástupkyni uh, předsedkyně poslanecké sněmovny nebo senátorku Adelu Šipovou a s nima se bavíme i mimo jiné o tom, uh, jak by se vlastně tenhle koncept spolupráce dal třeba uh, Přetavit i do státní zprávy. To by státní zpráva sama, sama o sobě nabízela více pozitivního mm -hmm. They are also trying to communicate with the, uh, with the political government representatives, political representatives such as the senators, to uh, find the ways how uh, everything could be easier, how everything could be done smoother. Uh, dalším takovým milníkem bylo to, že uh, ta spolupráce s ČSOB, protože ten rozsah je opravdu veliký, tak uh, to jsme oceňovali vlastně v Senátu, kam jsme pozvali uh, na, na pozvánku vlastně paní uh, místou předsedkyně uh, Senátu Jitky Sajkové, uh, velký tým spolužíků, uh, kteří si prošli do Senátu a ocenili jsme tam vlastně uh, spolupráci z uh, top managementu ČSOB, že nám vlastně dovolil uh, utvořit tak velký počet, uh, tak velký počet míst. Mm -hmm. They also awarded uh, this bank uh, in the Senate uh, because they wanted to thank them uh, uh, for creating so many places, so many jobs for uh, disabled people, 90, 90 jobs, which is really a huge number. Vedle toho jsme začali pracovat i na zvýšování povědomí o sociálním podnikání a ukazujeme i ostatním, dělíme se o naše zkušenosti, které máme vlastně z ČSOB, že handicapovaní zvládnou i složitější práci a že se spolupráce korporátů a sociálních podnikům opravdu vyplatí. Jeden, jedna z takových věcí byl online vlastně pořád 89 minut, který jsme vlastně vysílali a kde jsme se bavili o tom, jak můžeme inspirovat ostatní. Yeah, they are trying to increase the awareness about social entrepreneurship, and uh, they are trying to communicate and to uh, to cooperate with uh, famous people uh, in different uh, different um, say meetings, uh, video meetings, uh, podcasts, and so on. V poslední řadě uvedeme to, že, že pracujeme také na novém zákonu o sociálním podnikání, protože sociální podnikání nemá v současné době vlastní zákon, funguje na v zákoně o zaměstnanosti, ale vytvořili jsme vlastně tým, který vlastně vidíte tady, který je z různých oblastí sociálního podnikání, jako je třeba, jako je třeba gastro, výroba, sociální zemědělství a pracujeme vlastně i na novém zákonu o sociálním podnikání, 
který už třeba jinde v Evropě je a už je, dá, už je dávno zaběhlý, ale u nás v Česku, v Česku nikoli. In the Czech Republic, we don't have a social, uh, social entrepreneurship uh, role uh, or, or anything that would regulate uh, these enterprises. And they, they created a working group. Uh, part of this working group are uh, many people from different, uh, different fields, not only as, uh, them as social enterprise, but from the agriculture and other, other stuff. And uh, they are working with the uh, senators, with, uh, with governments, and they are trying to uh, give uh, some um, let's say, yeah, some some scape or some some scope of this social entrepreneurship in here in Czech Republic. So we believe that yeah. we will get to this very <laughs> soon. Máme širokou skupinu uh, různých uh, zájmových skupin, jako jsou neziskovky, ale i akademická sféra. Uh, a třeba na tomhle zákoně uh, spolupracujeme vlastně i s zasilou formátu. Yeah, they have many people who they work with, uh, not only from social entrepreneurship or government, uh, but uh, also many interest groups from uh, the universities. Uh, we are one of them who are working with them on this uh, preparation of the social entrepreneurship law. To bylo vše, doufám, že se vás moc nenudil, byla to spousta, spousta informací, nicméně my si hodně Rádi si, rádi motivujeme naše zaměstnance, dokonce i my musíme různý soutěže. To také patří do sociálního podnikání. Tak díky moc a těším se pak do části na vaše dotazy. <tějí> From the University of Sarajevo, uh, Jasna Kovacevic, my friend and colleague, and she's a very capable person in terms of inclusive workplaces, inclusive uh, organizations, uh, and I really like her presentation, so I believe you'll enjoy it. And I just want to comment one thing that those who are online now, you can write your questions uh, in the chat. And uh, after later in the discussion, we will check the chat uh, at the end and we will ask your questions as well. So don't uh, don't be afraid to ask whatever you want in the chat in Microsoft Teams. Uh, those who are sitting here, of course, you will have time and you will have space to ask your questions uh, in person in here. Okay, yes, now the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Sylvie. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am I'm having a, such an honor to be here with you. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend this event uh, in person, but hopefully we will meet maybe uh, this fall. Um, it really uh, this topic is something that is really capturing my attention, both in teaching and also in research. And uh, for today, I have decided to talk to you about inclusive and sustainable organizations and to see what are the possible factors for modern uh, forms of discrimination and why do these forms of discrimination occur. So today we will discuss about the paradoxes of modern organizations and all the traits of modern organizations that are basically related to the outcomes of discriminating practices in the labor market. Uh, apart from that, we will also talk about biases and prejudices and try to uh, understand from where do they actually come from and why do we uh, face and encounter the problems of implicit discrimination nowadays because today discrimination is a little bit different from the discrimination uh, decades ago which was more explicit which was uh, basically a very direct form of discrimination and I would like to start today's lecture with a quote by Dr. Lorraine Kaminsky who is also expert in diversity diversity and inclusion, and she is often underlying this particular quote that she's not different from you, I'm not different from you, I'm different like you, uh, implicating that basically all of us have different abilities and capabilities and potentials, and in that sense, organizational context should respond to our differences and the diversity that we bring with us in every organization that we choose to work in. So um, the introductory part is basically related to the paradoxes of modern organizations. Uh, you are um, 
on a course, uh, on a Sylvie's course, and you have probably discussed about uh, organizational traits and all the uh, specifics of organizations in 21st century. And uh, due to these contextual complexities and globalization and advances in science and technology, it appears that modern organizations in 21st century should be able to adapt much faster and should uh, be much quicker in their responses to global markets. Uh, and such complex problems really need agile organizations and very flexible organizations. Uh, these organizations are usually characterized by very flat organizational structures, and they promote teamwork, they promote diversity, they, they promote improved communication and intensive collaboration. And uh, by definition, such organizations should be a fertile ground for more diverse workforce. But in reality, is it really so? Are we really talking about inclusive organizations that are in, uh, that are aligned basically with very complex organizational environment, both internally and externally? But before we continue with the paradoxes of modern organizations, I would like to define diversity and try to decipher what uh, diversity really is. By definition, diversity is the full spectrum of, of human differences and similarities. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can hear me um, because um, it seems that uh, somebody's having technical difficulties. Is everything okay with the sound? Yes, we can hear you, Yasna. Everything is okay. okay. Okay, great. Oh, great, great. Okay, so I will I will continue with with my presentation. So. Um, by definition, diversity is basically the full spectrum of, of differences, human differences that we also exhibit on many different levels throughout our, our lives, but also similarities. And sometimes these differences and these characteristics can be either immutable or mutable characteristics. They're either something that we can change or we cannot change. So basically, if you look at the PowerPoint uh, graphic part of the PowerPoint, you can see that uh, those, those differences that are immutable are basically our physical ability. We cannot change our age. We cannot change the race, ethnicity. Uh, we cannot change the uh, basically a mental ability. Some of these aspects are also changeable. Uh, nowadays, people can change their gender, gen gender identity or sexual orientation throughout their life. But also there are many different factors that contribute to our diversity, including the work style that we demonstrate in the organizational context, our educational background, personal habits, life experiences as well, family status, religion. And uh, the third circle basically is related to differences that um, are stemming from, for example, union affiliation, if we are a member of the union uh, in the organization that we work for, uh, whether we are more uh, distant uh, from, from, um, from our home when we are going to our work. This is related to work location, for example, urban or rural uh, place of habitat, job title, headquarters or field in the organization and how we are approaching uh, to our headquarters, our seniority in terms of organizational hierarchy, et cetera. So this uh, very complex uh, spectrum of individual differences is affecting our own diversity. And basically there are no two same persons in one organizational context because many of these uh, individual differences are in fact overlapping and making this uh, story about diversity beautiful in the organizational sense, but also in the uh, individual level. Now let's go back to the paradoxes of modern organizations and let's do some fact checking. I like statistical data because they're depicting the picture of, of, of objectively, hopefully trying to depict uh, the picture of the world in which we are living. But we also have to be very cautious about the statistics and how to interpret them. But the statistics are, um, usually telling the story that, for example, women are making roughly 50% of working population on a global scale. This is also the case in Bosnia-Herzegovina, and we can discuss uh, whether this is also the case in Czech Republic. And in average, in, uh, on the world level, on the global level, women are more educated than men, especially in the tertiary education. So women have more tertiary education. However, less than 5% of women are on executive positions in leading OECD countries. Uh, while 51.5% of adult women with tertiary education are either unemployed or sometimes outside the labor force, 
Uh, the same is the only case for 17.2% of men. So we can see that there is a huge gender gap in terms of unemployment of highly skilled, highly educated individuals, especially if uh, that individual is a woman. Uh, on a global scale, we also know for a fact that women are less represented in STEM field, and STEM field is basically the acronym for science, technology, engineering, and math, and this seems to be a chronic problem that is related to horizontal segregation in the labor market. When we're talking about the forms of segregation in the labor market, this segregation can either be horizontal, which means that this is occupational segregation, and uh, according to this theory, we have female and male professions. And they are segregated. Men and women are segregated within these uh, these uh, these occupations. For example, education is usually considered as female uh, occupation. Education and also caring services and social welfare they are considered worldwide to be female occupations. While on the contrary, for example, the construction, the engineering are usually uh, related to uh, male profession and male. Um, basically, they're coined as male uh, territory and male field within the labor market. So uh, in the contrast, we also have vertical segregation, which is basically related to difficulties and barriers that minority groups face when they're trying to advance in the hierarchical context within organizations. So also women and also minority groups are facing the problems within organizations in terms of vertical uh, advancement in the workplace. That's why we have only, for example, 5% women on the executive positions, because uh, there is a, a distinct barrier, which is called the glass ceiling, that is preventing women and members of minority groups to advance to higher hierarchical positions. Uh, apart from um, gender, um, uh, in terms of uh, women on boards and uh, vertical segregation, uh, you can see on this slide that there are difficulties for women to attain hierarchical positions, and this is only a snapshot of what is happening in the world, especially in Europe. And we can see on this slide that France, for example, and Norway and Sweden, and in more general sense, Scandinavian countries are pioneers of gender diversity, and uh, they have the highest percentage of women on corporate boards. Uh, as you can see, the situation is, is a little bit different in other countries. Some countries have defined uh, legally binding quota for women and other minority group members to be included in um, boards of state-owned enterprises, for example. This is not the case in Bosnia-Herzegovina, and, and this is something that we are talking about recently, more recently, uh, in Bosnian context, but I think that we are pretty far from that type of solution, and we will discuss about quotas uh, later on. Apart from gender diversity, we also um, have this problem of including people from LGBTQIA uh, plus community. Uh, and the research shows that uh, people from LGBTIQ uh, community are frequently experiencing discrimination in the workplace, also harassment from the early age, from the primary education throughout secondary and higher education, which usually hampers employment prospects later on in the future. And uh, discrimination that occurs in the education sector continues to exacerbate uh, in employment and in the labor market throughout the employment cycle of people who are uh, from this community. Uh, now, research shows, uh, recent research shows that uh, lesbian, gay, and bisexual workers, also transgender and intersex persons, are being asked very invasive questions during the interviews about their personal life, about their sexual orientation, and sometimes they're even uh, being asked to justify why they are not heterosexual. Uh, and these experiences of, of LGBTQ and A workers um, have been very, very striking because they often have to prove their femininity or masculinity in order to be accepted within the organizational context. If they are not accepted, then the situation even gets worse uh, in that organizational context and their contribution is not valued. Uh, apart from people from LGBTQ&A uh, community, uh, there is also one particular group of people who has been systemically discriminated in the workplace. This is also case in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and as far as I can see from research, also from Central and Eastern Europe, uh, Roma unemployment and discrimination also tends to be very high. For example, in Slovakia, which is your neighboring country, is over 70 percent. In Bulgaria, 41.5 percent. 40.5 percent in Czech Republic, and also this continues on in countries of uh, Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, 
what I'm experiencing in Bosnian context is that very often we are facing stereotypes and discriminating people from Roma community. Um, and we are trying to connect the dots by trying to establish the connection between their identity and poor education, often discriminating these people in the educational context, but also in the labor market. And um, as a result, uh, people from Roma community have very difficult access to education, and they almost have no work experiences that leads them basically to poor access to labor market and increased distance from the labor market of this population. And this is a chronic problem also in context of um, European Union as well. Again, uh, in the countries which are not part of European Union, this problem is even more exaggerated because uh, there is no access to, for example, European funds that are focused and that are targeting basically the minority groups at, in the context of uh, employment practices and employment policies. Apart from Roma community, uh, another minority group that has been systematically uh, experiencing discrimination on the labor market and within the organizational context are persons with disabilities. And statistics are also very clear. Uh, on this slide, you can see uh, the relationship and the ratio uh, between uh, employment status, unemployment rate uh, for persons without disabilities and with disabilities. And these statistics shows that people with disabilities are having less odds to be employed than people without disabilities, especially vulnerable persons with disabilities are women, and they are employed at a lower rate uh, than women without disabilities or even men with disabilities. So in majority of the countries, many people with disabilities are routinely classified in labor market terms as inactive. And this is also case in Bosnia Herzegovina. So uh, persons that are uh, experiencing difficulties in terms of disability are by aut automatism in Bosnia Herzegovina classified as inactive. And this is also a factor that contributes to systematic discrimination of persons uh, uh, encountering a variety of difficulties. Now, before I continue with uh, another uh, part that relates to biases and discrimination, I would like uh, to ask you to close your eyes and visualize a story that I will tell you. And later on, you will answer uh, to questions. And I will ask Sylvie maybe to, to have a brief, very brief discussion about the outcomes of your visualization. Okay, so this is not a psychological experiment. This is only uh, something that I will use as an argument for the next part of the presentation. Uh, close your eyes and try to imagine a situation that I'm describing. Imagine a situation that you're rushing to the airport and you are late for your flight. You're going overboard, for example, uh, to the United States of America uh, on a very, very important conference that relates to your job, to your profession. And you're jump, jumping over people's luggage, you're jumping over people just to get on plane in time and you're the last person to enter the plane. Of course, the pilot and uh, flight attendants are coming out and they're making jokes of you because you are the last person entering the plane. You are all having few good laughs and you're going back to your seat. And as you're going uh, to your seat, you found out that uh, through the conversation uh, that the person sitting next to you is a neurosurgeon and going to a conference abroad as well to, to deliver a very important speech about uh, uh, neurons and, and the, the latest advancements in medical treatments. So this is an over overseas flight. It's very long and you're very exhausted. And after uh, you have landed, you're going to your hotel, you're exhausted, you're very hungry, and you want to go to a lovely restaurant to have a lovely dinner. And you're going to a restaurant and you can um, notice that the atmosphere in the restaurant is very lively and you find out that a couple is celebrating their anniversary. And they're so festive and they're so kind that they're inviting all the restaurant's guests to join their celebration. So you're ending up celebrating uh, their anniversary throughout the night. And uh, in the morning, you're going to a conference, a very important person uh, from the IT field is telling something more about the use of artificial intelligence in the organizational context. And this is the end of my story, basically. And now I would like um, to ask you a couple of questions and uh, you will try to answer to Sylvie. So uh, I hope I can hear everyone's answer and maybe uh, you can type your answers in the uh, chat box section so I can see what you're writing as well. 
Okay. Uh, the first question: When you were entering the, the plane, was a pilot uh, an Asian female? Who had Asian female in your vision uh, as a pilot? Raise your hand. No one. No one. Yeah. No one. Okay. Okay. The person that was traveling with you, sitting next to you, a neurosurgeon. Was a neurosurgeon a woman? This neurosurgeon who was sitting next to you in the plane, was it a woman? Raise your hand. One, two. Yeah, two. Me too. Three. Okay. 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 Uh, when you came to a restaurant to have a lovely dinner, the couple that was celebrating the anniversary, their anniversary, was it a gay couple? Was it a gay couple celebrating the anniversary? One, two, three. Three. Four. Okay. Four. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And at the end, the person, very important person that was delivering a speech on a conference that you were attending about the use of artificial intelligence in the business context, was it a woman of black uh, origin, of African origin? Was it a black woman who was giving this speech about the IT specialist on the conference in your vision? Raise your hand. One. One. <laughs> Only one. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I will continue with my presentation and I will tell you what's the moral of this particular story. Now, um, as I can notice, how many people is present, Sylvie, in the room? I'm not sure. How many are we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, I don't know, around 30? 30? 30, 40? Okay. 30, 40. Okay, and I can see that there is 18 people, 17 people in in uh, online. Yeah. Okay, so this is a pretty huge group. We have a, a very, uh, let's say, um, small number of people who have visualized, as I have suggested. Now, what is the moral of the story, and what is the problem behind the visualization? Now. Um, we all have a very different way of responding. And as I have mentioned on the first part of the presentation, uh, today discrimination is a little bit different than discrimination decades ago. Decades ago, discrimination was basically very direct, as you can see on this slide. Uh, as in the 60s, for example, it was a usual thing to see uh, um, a note on, on, let's say, a restaurant that people are not serving white, that they are serving only whites, they are not serving Spanish or blacks or Mexicans. Or uh, another picture with a man and a woman and, and women, she's having a cook's hat. Uh, this was a commercial for Kenwood uh, Kitchen Appliances. And uh, I'm not sure whether you can see because the, the lettering is very small. It says that chef does everything but cook and that what wife, wives are for. So we have this very, very uh, direct implication of different gender uh, roles within a society, which is basically considered as a patriarchal society. And on a third picture, you can see a woman that is trying to um, open a bottle of ketchup and underneath this picture, it says, you mean a woman can open it, implying that women are usually the weaker sex, the weaker gender. Now, uh, what is happening with the visualizations? Why haven't we imagined or visualized woman being a pilot? Or why haven't we imagined women, woman being a neurosurgeon? Or why when we are saying, when we are uh, discussing about couples, we are automatically trying to visualize a traditional couple as a union of wo uh, woman and a man. Uh, this, is, this happens because uh, we are responding to what we see in our environment. And uh, our magnificent, magnificent brain is basically the main, um, uh, the main element that needs to be held as accountable. Now, uh, I will explain it why this happens. But before I continue, uh, look at this picture. Uh, this picture is depicting me and my friend Magdalena. And according to this particular picture that is from Museum of Optical Illusions, it seems at first that Magdalena is much, much higher, much taller than me. But the fact is, is that I'm five centimeters taller than Magdalena. It depends from the angle from which you are photographing this image uh, in the Museum of Optical Illusions. And this one is actually something that you're probably familiar with. When I ask you what you see, 
some people will say they see a duck, other people will see they see a rabbit. And basically, uh, if you look from different angles, both of you are probably right, because this picture is depicting at the same time, simultaneously, duck and a rabbit. Now, why do we respond to the environment? And why have we visualized, for example, traditional couples more often, individualizations? Why have we envisioned Pilot being a male in this story? Um, the main guilty element is basically our brain. And this is a very interesting story and also very interesting theory uh, by Nobel Prize winner Daniel Kahneman, uh, who has won a Nobel Prize in the psychology, uh, as, uh, in fact, in the behavioral economics that is heavily relied on, on psychology. And Daniel Kahneman uh, was basically developing a theory with his colleague Amos Tversky, and he said that basically human brain has two distinctive systems for cognitive reasoning. System one is... Uh, focused on very fast decisions that we make on an everyday basis. For example, are we going to uh, buy white or black chocolate? Are we going to uh, buy chocolate with hazelnuts, uh, hazelnuts or something else? And this happens very fast. These are everyday decisions. We are making snap decisions. And this happens in the unconscious part of our brain. And these decisions are basically automatic because they're a result of repeated uh, actions that we have taken. They are a uh, result of our habits that we are taking on an everyday basis. Now, going back to the visualization, uh, in the popular media, in Hollywood movies, in everyday situations, uh, women are less represented as pilots. Women are less represented, for example, as prime ministers. Women are less represented as presidents of countries. Uh, and this is basically the aspect of vertical segregation. But if we are seeing something more frequently, if we are able to visualize and we are able to accept that something as even possible. Now, if you do, and I will leave this up to you, if you do a little experiment in Google search engine, type in the word president and look at the pictures, what will Google uh, produce? Majority of these pictures will be males, usually um, males and in, in, um, uh, in their mid mid fifties, uh, men who are usually uh, Caucasian, and this brings us uh, to the question: Why is this happening? Basically, is this what media is reproducing? Media is reproducing these images that we are taking for granted and basically programming us to believe that, uh, for example, we are often that presidential positions, for example, are more. Uh, for men, or they are basically male play playground. This also happens in business. This also happens happens in the army, in in the police force, where uh, these uh, these basically occupations are considered to be as professions that are male dominated. This is because there uh, is a strong social background and the system with uh, that is abundant with patriarchal values that basically describes very strict gender roles. Uh, and this is uh, that's why we are reproducing images through media, through education, through movies, through popular music, through popular content that we are reflecting as soon unconsciously. When I have asked you to imagine, the automatic reaction is to imagine a pilot being a male. That's why our brain is basically in the system one, reproducing images that we see on an everyday basis. Now, in contrast, system two, uh, cognitive system two is slow, tends to be uh, switched on when we need to make a conscious effort, conscious effort to do something. So uh, when we compare these two systems, uh, on one side you can see a face of a woman, and by automatism you can see that she is some sort of discomfort, that she is either angry, that she is very uncomfortable, and this is something that we can automatically understand just looking at her face. And this is the system one. It is fast, it is unconscious, it is very automatic, but um, it is error prone. It is very, very prone to mistakes. However, when I ask you to multiply two uh, numbers, such as 17 uh, times 24, or even uh, if things get more complicated, when I ask you to multiply 123 times 535, and rare people will come out with automatic response, only those who are extremely talented in mathematics. Now, these are the results of simultaneous, uh, simultaneous efforts by system one and system two. And throughout the day, 24, uh, throughout our 24 uh, hours that we have available during the day, we are usually using the system one. 
Now, if we are not used to seeing different people from different communities uh, in organizational context, we are prone to make uh, these fast unconscious decision, uh, decisions, especially if we are victims of uh, social stereotypes. For example, in Bosnian context, there are stereotypes about what women can do and cannot do, or there are stereotypes what Roma people should do or should not do. And when we are exposed to these social uh, stereotypes, when we are indoctrinated from the preschool age to adulthood, then we are prone to making these snap de decisions. And uh, the system one is uh, basically creating the fertile ground for implicit or uh, indirect discrimination. You have probably throughout your life been uh, a person that has been discriminating indirectly, discriminating somebody else because of the system one. Because majority of our time uh, in cognitive functioning, we are using system one because it's fast. It is using the shortcuts and we are trying to make decisions on the basis of our prior uh, experience or our habits. And usually these habits can, can in fact be very wrong. Now, the organizational psychology is uh, teaching us that as a result of these cognitive biases and the errors in the decision-making process, which really means that we are basically over-relying on system one, we have a lot different examples of cognitive bias in the workplace, such as, for example, optimism bias, when you're seeing the world is slightly more rosy than it really is, or the IKEA effect. This is very interesting, for example, because the IKEA effect is um, related to our sense that something that we have built ourselves has, uh, a, 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 let's say, higher value. We get emotionally attached to something that we have created, and that's why the IKEA effect is very interesting in the organizational context because managers often consider their projects as their baby, and they're having difficulties delegating decisions uh, regarding that particular project. Or anchoring effect, for example, the, the tendency to rank the first information we hear as a more important or relevant uh, than subsequent information that we hear for di from different sources. Or, for example, there's also a bias called Dunning-Kruger effect that basically reflects the tendency of those who are not so skilled to overestimate their abilities. Of course, um, one of very interesting biases in the organizational context is in-group bias, which is basically something that follows us from the early days of human civilization. And this is the tendency to, uh, for people to give preferential treatment to others who are belonging to the same group that we belong. So this is related to the system one. We are classifying people as somebody we know, and we know what we can expect from people we know. And uh, on the other hand, uh, people have the tendency to fear everything that is unknown, whether this is uh, the contact with people from different ethnic backgrounds, people who have different sexual orientation, people who are coming from different religion communities, people who are coming from uh, different races, etc. So we feel more comfortable with people who are like us because we are safe, safer with these people belonging from, for example, different, uh, the same ethnic community because we know what we can expect from them. In contrast, we tend to fear of those people who we do not know. We do not know their habits. We do not know their beliefs. And sometimes people feel endangered by somebody else who is, um, who is a different, who has different, different habits and who has different norms. And in, in the terms of organizational context, the result of such implicit bias in, in, in organizations, in the workplace, uh, are basically the mental schemas that are a result of cognitive bias and, and overuse of cognitive, uh, cognitive uh, shortcuts. And these cognitive shortcuts can, in fact, lead to stereotyping. Examples from the organizational context are, for example, maternal wall that occurs when colleagues at work view mothers, mothers New, newly, uh, new mothers or pregnant women in the workplace as less productive or less competent and, or less committed to their jobs just because uh, they have decided to, uh, to have a family, to have children. Another example is also in-group bias that occurs especially at the higher levels of the hierarchy in organizations. That's why, for example, the CEO office is often depicted as boys playground. If you go back to the statistics uh, that I have illustrated at the beginning of the lecture, there was one uh, particularly striking fact that only 5% of women are in the board positions in the developed countries of OECD. So this is a very, very small percentage because we know for a fact that women are competent and have 
uh, more education. They're uh, more educated than men, but only small proportion of the, these women uh, get to be in the executive position. So this is the problem of in-group bias where, for example, men feel more comfortable with other men in contrast being comfortable with women because there is a general stereotyping that stems from the society because of the strict gender roles. For example, women are, should be uh, at the prim primarily should take care of the families and uh, only under that those terms uh, when there is enough space, when there is enough time, when there is enough support, they should advance in their careers. But other than that, they should first become mothers, uh, they should first become wives and uh, basically to fit in the social fabric and social picture that is usually abundant with gender stereotypes and other stereotypes alike. Now, uh, how do we get from cognitive bias to discrimination? And this is one example, very plastic example, how this occurs. For example, uh, we are witnessing maternal law in the workplace where colleagues are judging uh, new mothers uh, that they will not be uh, so present in the workplace, they will not be able And as a result of that cognitive bias, which is not, is not anchored in, in real arguments, in real facts, uh, the stereotype type gets created about working mothers being less committed to their job because there is a, a pre-assumption that women, when they uh, have children, will be more likely absent from work because children will get sick when they uh, enter the kindergarten. They will be absent from work. They will have difficulties to get devoted to the projects, very, very uh, complex projects. So, so this is an, an overall stereotype that is really very frequent in the organizational context in the societies that we are coming from. As a result of that stereotype, uh, this stereotype uh, can be in the forms of either auto stereotype, and this is the auto stereotype that relates to ourselves. For example, when women accept the prevailing stereotype and gender norms and behave accordingly. So this very often means that women are choosing the female professions just because these female professions are offering more quality time for their family. These professions are not that um, uh, demanding in terms of their career development, etc. On the other hand, apart from auto stereotype, which is a stereotype about ourselves, is the hetero stereotype. This is the stereotype about others. For example, men believing that stereotype about working mothers being less committed is true. Hence, women, as a result of these hetero stereotypes, have less chances to get promoted in the workplace. And as a result of these auto stereotypes and hetero stereotypes, we often uh, have the situation when women are being discriminated in education, in the labor market, and later on in, the, in their workplaces, in their workplace habitats. So this is a path, basically, from these cognitive biases. And this uh, recent theory about implicitly discriminating people is something that is very beneficial in practical terms and also in theoretical terms, because good news is uh, that we can detect that we are implicitly discriminating somebody. We can get aware uh, of being uh, discriminating to somebody else, and we can correct that behavior. The good news also is that there are organizational mechanisms that can be used to address implicit bias, these cognitive bias biases that occur in the organizational environment. And these practices and also these mechanisms can help to develop inclusive workplace. Um, this uh, proves to be something that takes a little bit more time and uh, it needs certainly uh, more, let's say, support from the organizational or hierarchical top from CEOs because only people who are at the top of organizations can help to create inclusive environment for everybody else. So uh, these inclusive policies have to be written down in the organizational documents, in the organizational policies, but they have to be uh, something that has to be demonstrated every day on every possible level within the organization. Uh, it's good to have diverse workforce. But this is only one part of the story. The other part of the story is inclusion. And that means that you're enabling people who are coming from diverse backgrounds to really participate in the organizational life and organizational dynamics. This means that everybody else has, to, from the majority population, has to take additional efforts to practice social inclusion on an everyday basis. Everything else other than that uh, might result in very superficial solutions 
and hopefully we'll have an opportunity to discuss about these uh, theoretical implications that I have presented today. And I think this is the end of my presentation. Hopefully I haven't taken too much of the time. Thank you for your attention and hopefully uh, this was beneficial and interesting to you. Thank you very much, Yasna. Uh, yeah, we can make that. <laughs> the presentation you were perfect with the time and uh, we will be really happy if you can join us even uh, after uh, after the break for the discussion okay so uh, let's uh, start our second part of uh, our event uh, inclusive and sustainable organizations now I would like to invite uh, sorry invite welcome our guest uh, from the NGO sector from Mary's Meals organization. I don't know if you ever heard about this organization, but they are doing a great job, which will be introduced by Maria Liano, uh, the representative of uh, this NGO. So the floor is yours, and I will be uh, the translator. Thank you very much. I would like to introduce the Caritative Project of Mary's Meals, which has a dožíva 20. krásnych 20. rokov, možno je to vašim rovesníkom, ja si ich mať. Táto organizácia, na rozdiel od doteraz prezentovaných organizácií, je zameraná z, od nás zvnútra sferom von. Snažíme sa riešiť, do prispieť na riešeniu veľkých nerovností, ktoré sa v tomto svete vyskytujú v rovine sociálnej, spoločenskej, ekonomickej, zdravotnej. V istom takom špecifickom segmente, ktorý bližšie predstavím. Táto organizácia... Uh, and they are trying to overcome uh, the difficulties uh, within, um, uh, let's say, inadequate conditions and uh, unequal, unequal uh, conditions uh, in social health, yeah, health care. Uh, organizácia uh, Českej republiky post, České republike pôsobí 4 roky a Uh, jej úlohou je v tomto prostredí získavať uh, zdroje, čiže je to fundraisingová organizácia, získavať zdroje na uh, ciele, ktoré zdieľané s materskou školskou usídlenou organizáciou. Mm -hmm. So currently in Czech Republic they are four years and uh, they are trying to get resources because they are based on fundraising uh, and co in the cooperation with the uh, organizations seed in uh, Scotland. The founder of this organization is Magnus McFarland Bell, Bell uh, Scottish philanthropist. Mm -hmm. The founder of this organization is uh, Magnus uh, McFarland Barrow, Yes, and uh, he is a uh, philanthropist from Scotland. Yeah, so he is from Scotland. Uh, so he is from Scotland. Yeah, 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 uh, he, he wrote this book, uh, In Czech Environment, it is, uh, we can call it a bestseller. And uh, from my position, I can pretty much recommend, my, I, I brought it to my mother as well, and she loved it, and she said uh, everyone has to read it, to find out the situation, uh, what's happening uh, in Africa and so on. So, yeah, great, great book. Táto kniha je pár exemplárov na dispozícii pre záujemcov a inak na našom, webu, na našom webe je možné si ju gratis stiahnuť v audio alebo e-knihovom formáte. Yes, of course, uh, on Amazon you can have ah, it, for example. On the main you can you can buy. What's the title? Is it the same uh, in English? Ah, uh, 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 okay. So who who read William? Yeah, who who read uh, William of the Children? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can maybe show it. I suppose maybe you can see it here. 
A história organizácie Mary Smills uh, začala v spojitosti s autorom tejto knihy pred tými 20 rokmi, v roku 2002, uh, keď bola v Malavi, v juhovýchodnej Afrike, uh, veľká humanitárna a zdravotná kríza. Magnus v tej dobe bol pozvaný do Malavy, aby hľadal nejaké riešenia, ako pomôcť v tejto dramatickej situácii, kedy bola jedna veľký veľký hladomor z titulu sucha a zároveň aj veľké sociálne problémy z toho titulu, že táto krajina patrí medzi najpostižnejšie nemocov AIDS. Tým pádom rodičovská generácia bola veľmi preriedená a bolo dá si ho. Pri tej príležitosti navštívil hodne rodín, aby hľadal, zistil, akým spôsobom sa dá pomôcť. A inšpiráciu pre ďalšie kroky a pre to, čo robíme už 20 rokov, našiel v jednej z týchto rodín. Táto rodina už bola bez otca, práve z toho titulu, že zomrala AIDS, a matka bola takisto ťažko nemocná a trápila sa s tým, čo bude z jej deti až po na tiež odídu. V tejto situácii sa Magnus spýtal najstaršieho syna Edwarda, že ako si predstavuje svoj život, čo by čakalo od života, ako by to bolo lepšie pre neho. A on vlastne sformuloval uh, veľmi jednoducho princípy našej organizácie. Mm-hmm. Rád by som mal dostatok jedla a jednoho dňa by som rád chodil do školy. To boli slova, ktoré Magnusovi vrtali v hlave a nakoniec zistil, že nič lepšie nevymyslí. A toto treba vidieť v širších súvislostiach, tento problém. Podľa informácií, štatistických informácií OSN a UNICEF sú tieto katastrofické alebo veľmi silné informácie. Viac ako 66 miliónov detí vo svete chodí do školy hladných. Viac ako 66 miliónov detí, pardon, 64 miliónov detí vôbec nechodí do školy, pretože si to nemôžu dovoliť. Aby prežili zo dňa na deň, tak uh, pracujú alebo žobrú, alebo hľadajú na smetiskách niečo A veľmi silné je údaj o tom, že každoročne umrie viac ako 3 milióny detí z titulu nemocí uh, spôsobených podvýživou. And every year uh, more than 3 million children uh, annually uh, die because of the diseases caused by hunger. Uh, by so uh, you can imagine that every second uh, uh, one child 
uh, one child is dying because of hunger in the world. A tak sme si v Medizmiels stanovili tieto dve zásady. So we set these, uh, these rules uh, in Medizmiels. Cieľom nášho snaženia je, aby každé jedno dieťa malo možnosť dostať jedlo, jedno, jedno jedlo denne v mieste svojho vzdelávania. The aim is that the child gets uh, one food uh, per day in the place of their education. A druhým našim zbožným prijavím je, že aby my, že musíme hovoriť ti, ale my, ktorí máme, dá sa povedať, nadbytok a máme čo zdieľať, aby sme to zdieľali s tými, ktorí nemajú ani to najzákladnejšie. And the other idea is that those uh, of us who, um, who have more than now we can eat, that we can consume, uh, we can share it with uh, the others who need it. Who have practically nothing. Who have practically nothing, yes. What is the purpose of our organization? We are trying to be low cost. We have our internal rule that minimum 90% of the gifts are used to be used to charitative work. The magic of Mary's Meals is, uh, first of all, it is that we are running the low cost. Uh, which means that at this um, I'm sorry, uh, uh, 93% of the gifts is uh, used directly for uh, for the uh, for the charity uh, purpose. Ako to dosahuje? How do we get to this point? Prvom rade v krajinách, kde pôsobíme, a to sú väčšina Ukrajiny, subsaharskej Afriky, v Ázii je to India, ako je z tie krajiny budete vidieť. Pôsobíme na uh, juhoamerickom kontinente, v Karibiku, na Blízkom východe. Snažíme sa, aby sme využili lokálne suroviny. We are trying to achieve this by using the local, uh, local, uh, local, sorry, uh, so use the local suppliers, uh, so to uh, use the local uh, from farms. Or, or Čiže nakupujeme súroviny od lokálnych farmárov. Yeah, we are, we are from the local farmers. Nechávame ich spracovať u lokálnych spracovateľov potravín. A lokálnymi dopravcami sa snažíme dopravovať tieto dá sa povedať už polotovary do škôl, kde pôsobíme. V krajinách, kde pôsobíme, ktorým teda hovoríme programové krajiny, využívame maximálne dobrovoľníkov. In the countries where we work, we are using as much as possible the volunteers. Má to dva dôvody. Jeden dôvod je ten ekonomický. The first reason is the economic reason. A druhý je psychologický, pretože sa snažíme lokálnym komunitám umožniť, aby sa o seba a o svoje deti boli schopní postať. Mm-hmm. And the second reason is the psychological effect, because we are trying to, uh, to make the local communities to be able to take care of themselves and to be part of the community. Mm-hmm. My ich podporíme súrovinou a ich úlohou je sa postarať o všetko ostatné, čo nakoniec vidíte na tých snímkoch. Na nosenie dreva, na ohriatie vody, ktoré sa dá ich naša väčšina, väčšina detí, to mala je vyše milióna, kde je dennodenne kašu, kukuričnou sojovú kašu. So we are supporting them, supplementing them with the raw materials and they are working with this. Treba častokrát do neprístupných miest vyniesť tú súrovinu, ten polotovar, ako sa hovorí, že sa spracováva v lokálnych uh, podnikoch. To sú vlastne inky, ako sa tá kaša pripravuje a potom je výdaj a vyviena okolo tých uh, nádob, z ktorých sa podávajú. Mm-hmm. 
uh, asi som nezaradil, nezaradil tento svet úplne ideálne, ale... No, tu som chcel ešte povedať jednu vec. Tí dobrovoľníci nie sú len v krajinách, kde pomáhame, ale aj v krajinách uh, zdrojových, ktoré získavajú tieto prostriedky na financovanie celého projektu. Yeah, the volunteers are not only from the local communities and countries where uh, medicine is helping, but also from the countries where they are trying to get to fundraising. Ale pre ilustráciu, v tej v Malavi samotné, kde tých milión 70 tisíc detí, ktoré, o ktoré sa staráme, máme asi 80 tisíc dobrovoľníkov. Just for your uh, imagination, in Malavi, in the country that we presented, uh, they have around uh, 8,000 uh, sú to mamičky, babičky, uh, deti, ktoré chodia do tej školy. A oni si zo svojho času, ktorú potrebujú na obživu svojej rodiny, nájdú niekoľko hodín do týždňa, aby celú tú operáciu pripraví jedno a zaistí, takže oni sa spriedajú v pondelok idú tiet, kde táto skupinka, v útorok ďalšia skupinka a tak ďalej a tak ďalej. Preto ich relatívne veľa. A ten psychologický efekt celého projektu je veľmi dôležitý, lebo tá komunita získala seba dôvodu, že s podporou niekoho z toho bohatšieho sveta už dokážu pre svoje deti veľa urobiť. A to všetko vedie k tomu, že, tak vlastne ešte jedna myšlenka, tí dobrovoľníci sú rovnako aj na našej strane, na strane darcovských krajín. V Českej republike máme asi 300 dobrovoľníkov, ktorí proste e, podľahli čaru tohoto projektu a venujú svoj voľný čas na jeho propagovanie, šírenie, získavanie finančných prostriedkov. A to všetko sa previeta potom do tejto informácie, že, že zo 459 korún sme schopní zaistiť celoročné stravovanie v škole pre jedno dieťa. Vy si tiež viete predstaviť, čo sa dá zaistiť za 500 korún a nám sa dali za tých 500 korún zaistiť to celoročné stravovanie. Súvisí to nesporne aj s tým veľmi skromným jedlom, ktoré tie deti v škole dostávajú. Ako som povedal, v Malavi tie deti majú prakticky dennodenne túto kašu. A tie deti sú šťastné, že majú istotu dennodenného prísunu tejto kaši. No a tento, táto informácia je ešte špecifická pre české prostredie. This information is specific for the Czech environment. Uh, organizáciu v Českej republike uh, založila partia ľudí, ktorých tento projekt nadchol a sú to ľudia, ktorí uh, pôsobia v biznise. A teda sme schopní generovať prostriedky na to, aby sme vedeli chod organizácie Českej republike financovať z našich zdrojov, bez toho, aby sme siahli na tarif získané z verejnej zbierky. Mm-hmm. 
So we are able to uh, to fundraise these uh, these uh, costs from uh, our own uh, uh, from our own money um, without uh, taking the money from the from the public sector. Například, jak tato kniha je toho důkazem, že jsme ho financovali, protože ji považujeme za ideální způsob opoznávání veřejnosti s tímto projektem. Mm -hmm. uh, even this book is a great example uh, how that they were able to finance it with their own own sources, private sources. Uh, Businessový pohled by se mi zdá to jednoducho. Uh, my si spočítali, že je lepší vložit tisíc korun do prevádzko, na prevádzku organizaci, jako dát tisíc korun na přijámé stravování dětí. Mm -hmm. uh, the business model is that they calculated it is better to invest uh, 1000 check rounds to, uh, to uh, run into this, not business, but this NGO, uh, rather than to invest directly 1000 uh, check rounds to uh, the children or to place. To play, to play. To play. Ta naša investice je zpětkrát úspěšnější. Za tisíc korun investice do prevádzky vygenerujeme více jako 5 násobok darů na... Yeah, for this 1,000 check round, they can generate more than five times higher amount of money for the children or for the purpose. With, the, with, with this investment. Na tomto slide máme informaci o tom, v kterých krajinách působíme. Největší počet dětí, o které se staráme, máme malý, a je to milion 170 tisíc dětí. Okolo 300 tisíc dětí je to v Zimbabwe. Milion 170 tisíc. Zimbabwe? Yeah. Uh, Zimbabwe 300 tisíc. 300 tisíc. Uh, Vyše 300 tisíc na Haiti. More than 200 000 on Haiti. Uh, Kenya je nějaký 100 tisíc. Kenya around 100 000. And so on and so on. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, na, tém, na tém mape je, je, ještě nemáme zachytěnou jednu krajinu, kterou jsme na konci minulého roka přidali a to je uh, Oma. Na jeseň minulého roku jsme se dopracovali k číslu 2 miliony dennodenně stravovaných dětí. A na konci roka to už bylo 2 miliony 60 tisíc dětí. Yeah, in the end it was 2 million and 60, uh, almost 60 000. Pre zaujímavosť minulý rok sme z, zo zdrojov získaných v Českej republike zaistili dennodenné stravovanie pre 62 tisíc dětí. Mm -hmm. Just for your information, the last year uh, they get uh, support for more than 60 000 children from the Czech uh, resources. Tento projekt a jeho zakladatel dostal za tu dobu existencie niekoľko významných ocenení. The founder of this organization get many awards during his life. Hrdina televízie CNN, jeden z jeho top 10. The hero, yeah, the top 10 heroes of TV CNN. Najvýznamnejší človek sveta, magazínu Time. In, yeah, in the Time magazine, he was uh, among the 100 uh, most, uh, most uh, influencing uh, people in the world. Sam the Times uh, ocenil Bogu knihu yeah, and the book was, uh -huh, and the book uh, was uh, also awarded uh, as, uh, well, with, the, with the Times, uh, Sunday Times uh, award. Ja hovorím, že v České republike je táto kniha bestsellerov vydal celý. Even in this uh, country is this book a uh, bestseller even without selling. Uh, prečo vydal celý? My sme za tie 4 roky rozdali asi 20 tisíc vytlačkov. Why? Uh, without selling because they, uh, they spread, they uh, distributed around 20,000 uh, uh, issues of this book last, last year or for the, for the period. No a ďalšie uznania Britská kráľovna Alžbeta 
Yeah, other uh, awards or acknowledgements uh, by Queen uh, Elizabeth II. Do I have other people said there was a good thing about the way? Benedict and uh, Francisco. Uh, Magnus was done here for the Czech Union for that for school. Yeah, and uh, honor uh, doctorate by universities and and work. Ta kniha sa volá Boda, ktorá krmi krmi milión detí. Toto je tá Boda, o ktorej Magnus píše, že táto Boda krmi milión detí. Tá Boda má súvis s tou našou zahraničnou dnešnou prezentátorkou. Sorry, the cabin that is feeding million million children. This is the cabin, actually, Mary Smith's cabin. Ona je dnes kancelárie od Magnusa. That's the office of Magnus. Pretože on sa drží tej bolty, aby bol stále pri zemi, aby si uvedomoval, že kde začala jeho karitatívna činnosť a nechce ísť do nejakých kancelári, úplne vybadaných, klimatizovaných, chce proste byť pri zemi. So you can find Magnus in offices with the air condition and so on. He would like to stay in this cabin to still be aware of the situation and be connected with the project and the people. On totižto túto budú si prenajal od otca v časoch, keď bola v Bosne a Hercegovine vôbec v Jugoslávii, keď bola občianská vojna. A on sa s bratom rozhodol, že budú pomáhať ľuďom v Bosne a Hercegovine charitatívne. He landed this cabin once there was a war in the former Jugoslavia. So he landed this cabin to help people in the former Yugoslavia, in Bosnia and Herzegovina and other countries, and he kept it. A on tam uskladňoval tú humanitárnu pomoc, ktorú vyzvieral v Škótsku od Narcov a odtiaľ to vozil kamionom do osobne do Bosnia a Herzegovina. So he stored the humanitarian aid here in this cabin and he distributed it to the whole world. O tom sa píše v tej knihe, on proste roky a roky robil humanitárnu pomoc tam, on a tam až potom prišiel k tomu projektu Maladia, takže už je asi vyše 30 rokov robil humanitárnu pomoc. Každý z nás môže tomuto projektu pomôcť. Tu nájde niekoľko takých jednoduchých foriem, ako sa dá k tomu hneď pristúpiť. We all can help. These are very simple forms. How to help? Pre nás je najdôležitejšie, aby sa táto informácia dostávala do uší a očí a srdc, čo najväčšie o počtu ľudí v tejto krajine. We would like to get it in the eyes of more and more people in this country. A možnosti sú obrovské. Ja mám jeden taký krásny sen, vykázajúci z toho, že v Českej republike je podľa štatistiky 4 milióny domácností. According to the statistics, in Czech Republic there are 4 million of households. A keby každá štvrtá z týchto domácností zo svojho ročného rozpočtu dala vokom 500 korún. If each of these households, not each, every fourth of these households is getting 100, giving 100 Czech crowns aside. 500. 500, sorry, 500 Czech crowns aside. Which might not be a problem, most of these households. Then we can help them. 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 Čo znamená, že je v silách každého z nás riešiť globálne problémy. Takýmto spôsobom. Maybe if you go back to that slide, just information for our students that yeah, another way which is not costly is to be the volunteer. Vlastně není náročné na finance, ale spíš na čas. Tak třeba pro naše studenty to může být zajímavé, tak se stát se dobrovolníkem. The financial gift we already of course mentioned and to like the organization that like the policy. O dobrovoľníctve samozrejme máme kopec informácií na našom webe www.marysmills.cz je to vo Habade a zároveň aj pre anglicky hovoriacich www.marysmills.org 
platform je vám většině všechno možné. Yeah, you can find more information on the website. There is meal.org uh, in English. Uh, O tomto projekte je natočených niekoľko veľmi zaujímavých dokumentov, ktoré sú na našom YouTube kanále. V polhodinovom formáte každý z tých dokumentov dokáže krásne odprezentovať, o čo sa jedná. Čas vyjadrí vám je o tom, jak ten projekt vzniká a ako pomáha v teréne. Generation Home je o tom, ako s odstupom času už mladí ľudia, ktorí boli s pomocou projektu Merizmiel zvykovaní, ako pohodnotia tento projekt. Uh, 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 yeah, there are many documentary uh, movies uh, which you can find uh, on their YouTube channel. So uh, Child 31 and so on, so you can you can find it on YouTube. No, a je nás, nájsť, dostať, uh -huh. Yeah, and there are some contacts, some links. Uh, maybe I have a question. Uh, bude možné potom uh, získat tu prezentaci třeba na rádi uh, studentů? Uh, yeah. no, já jsem tam, já jsem prezentaci, tím, že jsem tě slide, do, kde si je středu. Okay. Tam jsou ještě vysvětlené možnosti zapojení a se jako to okay. Takže to tam je. Yeah, so we will share the Takže ďakujem vám za pozornosť a teším sa do videnia medzi dobrovoľníkmi Marizy Hlasy. Tak krásné odpoledne všem, já jsem tady byl pozván uh, tak na rychlo, týdne, jak jsem to řešil s takým formákou. Uh, připravil jsem si pro vás uh, prezentaci o našem spolku PROSEN, který se specializuje na určitou formu společenské odpovědnosti. Uh, vlastně něco málo o nás. Jsme sice jako zapsaný spolek, ale nefungujeme úplně jako čistě nezisková organizace, jsme spíše parta přátel, která ve svým volném čase práce nebo po škole pořádá různé kreativní akce, s tím, že vlastně naším hlavním cílem je plnit vlastně handicapovaným, ať už dětem nebo dospělým. A vlastně celou tady práci děláme bez nároku na honorář, což nás trošku odlišuje od ostatních neziskových organizací. Tady jsou nějaké naše čísla, konkrétně pořádáme tři stěžení akce, o toho vám dneska budu povídat. Za tu dobu fungování školku jsme splnili 64 snů. V celkové hodnotě je zhruba přes 5 milionů, 5,5 milionů korun. Tak, první naší takovou největší akcí je charitativní běh Judy Mira, který vlastně před pár lety, už od roku 2013, je podle mě pořadatel pořádá náš předseda. Roman uh, Jančár, který je jako bývalý voják, který v roce, uh, teď přesně si nepamatuju, který to byl rok, ale v roce XX uh, byl v Belgii, kde byl na akci Make a Wish a natolik se mu to líbilo, že podobný koncept chtěl právě přenést i k nám do České republiky. Něco málo o té akci samotné, je to vlastně 24 hodinový charitativní byt, uh, který se koná uh, v Blansku nedaleko. Brna, je to asi 30 km na sever. Je to sportový charitativní akce a jak už jsem říkal, cílem je splnit sen jakékoliv podoby, jak už nějaké rehabilitace, plavba za oceánskou lodí a podobně. A veškerý ten výtěžek, který je vlastně použít na ty sny těch handicapovaných, tak primárně vlastně jako výtěžek je z triček a propagačních materiálů do dlouhém akce což můžete vidět tady na té fotce z nějakou paní, která má na sobě tohle krásné kličko. A samozřejmě vliv na to mají i naši partnery, s nimi se snažíme mluvit o hodnotu práci a náš generální partner Simpson za každé kolečko dává dvě koruny a tady ta částka, jenom pro vaše jako informaci, uběhne se třeba 50 tisíc koleček, je použita na plnění těch snů. 
Jinak letos po tříleté odmlce kvůli restrikcím spojené s COVIDem pořádáme osmý ročník akce, konkrétně druhý černový víkend. A jak už jsem říkal, tady můžete vidět našeho generálního partnera. Samozřejmě nás podporí organizace jako Jumon, nebo státní instituce jako Jumonovský kraj, nebo konkrétně naše město Blansko. A ještě teda tady k tomu možná něco řeknu. Vždycky každý ten ročník má jinou barvu trička. Letos máme vlastně červenou a vždycky se v rámci té akce snažíme podporovat ještě nějakou další myšlenku. Červená barva je typická pro HIV, takže vlastně budeme dělat nějakou prevenci, co se týče tady toho onemocnění. Lidé si budou muset otestovat, zda třeba náhodou nejsou HIV pozitivní. A zkrátka má to nějaký přesah. V tom roce 2019, kdy bylo žlutý tričko, tak jsme podporovali uh, Yellow Ribbon Run, což je vlastně projekt, kdy oni se snaží začlenovat uh, odsouzené uh, vězně zpátky do společnosti. Vybral jsem tady jeden nějaký příběh z roku 2019, kdy maminka Simona, uh, velmi odvážná žena s svalou atropí, Uh, už uh, si, si přála vlastně uh, výlet za oceánskou lodí a byl to jí vlastně celoživotní sen a tím, že vlastně je tady nedaleko kůřimi vlastně ve velmi malém bytě s rodinou, s manželem a s dcerou, která jí vlastně podporuje celoživotně, tak nemyslela vlastně jenom na sebe a chtěla i ten sen vlastně primárně pro tu dceru. Takže jsme jí splnili uh, sen za oceánskou lodí. A co se týče nějakých výsledků, tak akce se koná od roku 2013 a vlastně za tu dobu jsme uh, docílili toho, že na akci je 6 000 lidí, z toho nějakých 4 200 lidí uh, jsou samotní běžci. Uh, vlastně tady je vidět nějaká ta částka, co zhruba za těch 5 milionů, 5 000, teda 5 milionů 250 tisíc. Jsme splnili 60 snů a jak už jsem říkal, je to různá podoba, nejsou to rehabilitace nebo je to třeba i živý kůň. A je to vlastně akce pro každého. My se snažíme uh, propovat ty handicapované a ty, i tu širokou veřejnost s tím, uh, aby vlastně se toho mohli účastnit, bylo to pro nějaké způsobem bezbariérové a je to celkem cel, cel, takové jako motivující pro ty lidi samotné. Konkrétně tady třeba můžete vidět Zdeňka Mekoli, který ho podporujeme už od roku 2017. Je to vlastně bývalý uh, záchranář, který se účastnil, uh, který vlastně v tom roce 2017 dostal se mimozkou příhodu a určitě jste to zaznamenali v médiích, že se na něj pořádné zkoušku zbírají, protože bohužel pojišťou na uh, tyhle věci nepropláci. Můžete vidět nějaký uh, fotky z akcí, jak už jsem říkal, je to vlastně štafetový běh, takže každý ten člen toho týmu má štafetový kolík. Uh, běhá se to na uh, 400 metrové zapále a tady potom můžete vidět nějaké samotné předávání na konci akce. Potom máme další projekt, to je takzvaně uh, Zivu a pomáhej, který se vlastně inspiroval uh, světovým dnem Zivu. Uh, akorát se k tomu přidělal ještě vlastně ten chartatový podtext. A jedná se vlastně o nějaký šestihodinový uh, zhybovací maraton, kdy se sejdou lidé a právě taky koupí si tričko z logem akce a za každý zhyb máme korunu. A ta politika je úplně stejná, že vlastně uh, na základě uh, toho pohybu a zakoupených materiálů uh, se plně jsme vykepovaní. Je to asi desetinásobně menší akce, takže akce se účastní jenom nějakých 400 lidí. Z toho je 100 vlastně sportovců. Za tři ročníky jsme splnili čtyři sny za zhruba 150 tisíc korun. Tady zase můžete vidět nějaké fotky z akce. Jak jsem říkal, my se snažíme vlastně jako probojovat i ty handicapovaní. Tak tohle konkrétně je Lukáš Polčák z Rumína, který se narodil bez ruky a bez nohy. Uh, samozřejmě teda uh, má i protest na roku robotickou, uh, pro kterou se mu skládá lidé za 350 tisíc korun. A takže jsme ho pozvali, aby motivoval ty sportovce uh, k lepším výkonům. Jinak uh, každá ta akce samozřejmě má nějaký doporučný program. Tady můžete vidět, uh, kolik se vlastně v roce 2019 uh, zvládlo udělat zbyvů. My opravdu to číslo každým rokem uh, Stoupa a celé to máme tak ještě doplněné jako soutěž pro, pro ty sportující, aby to nebylo jenom čistě o té kartotní stránce, ale mohli se zapojit i třeba takto. 
Nějaké naše hodnoty toho sportu, jak jsem říkal, snažíme se propojit sport a charitu, budovat nějaký životní styl lidí a zároveň podpořit handicapované. Potom nějaký lidský přístup. My vlastně jako organizujeme to jako parta kamarádů, takže to s tím způsobem můžu působit na první pokud třeba amatérsky, ale děláme to fakt s vidíčkem a na té akce je to vidět. A co se týče partnerů, tak se snažíme budovat dlouhodobou spolupráci, protože taková ta jednorázová forma nám nedává moc smysl. Potom 100% toho výtěžku je vlastně věnovaný na ty handicapovaný, nenecháváme si zkrátka nic stranou a snažíme se vždycky veškeré ty příspěvky, kdy tam snažíme, tak když třeba jako zbídou nějaké prostředky, tak máme organizace, s kterými spolupracujeme, tak třeba podpoříme jejich činnost a podobně. A co se týče nějaké transparentnosti, tak naším cílem je, aby ten sen, a ať už je to prostě sen, či ho vlastně jako podoba, ať už je to třeba ten pobyt nebo třeba zájezd do Japonska, tak aby vlastně to přišlo té konkrétní osobě a ne třeba někomu třetímu. Takže vlastně tolik k tomu. A lidé se samozřejmě můžou podívat na transparentní účet. Tady potom je vidět na konci nějaké předávání, kdy vlastně my se to snažíme koncipovat tak, aby když ty prostředky vybereme, tak lidé na konci viděli, kolik, co, a, co a kolik se danému člověku dá a ten přísun těch endorfinů je tam velmi velký. Tady máme pak nějaké další aktivity, tohle konkrétně je třeba naše jako třetí aktivita, třetí e-mail, kdy naše kolegyně Dáša si vymyslela, že budeme sázet stromky, tak společně s dobrovolníky jsme vysázeli nedaleko Blanska nějakých třeba půl tisíce stromků a ten výtěžek z toho, co jsme dostali jako od lesů České republiky, tak jsme vlastně darovali část tady vlastně na Vánoční dárky pro učené seniory v domově uchodců. Samozřejmě jako celý národ jsme se připojili i k nějakému šití roušek. A potom vlastně v roce 2020, kdy byl ten první lockdown a my jsme vlastně nemohli pořádat naši akci, tak kolegyně přišla s nápadem, že lidem tričko bude chybět. Takže tady vlastně na té fotce můžete vidět část vlastně fotky. Tady potom jsou už nějaké jako komunity lidí, co si to tričko pořídili. Tady třeba je bývalý Fejkman z Jomorovského kraje. A pomocí téhle zbytky jsme vlastně pro toho Zdeníka Mikuly se měli nějakých 350 tisíc na, na jeho rehabilitace. No, pokud nás budete kontaktovat, sledovat, nechám to na všem uvážení, bohužel nemám tady pro vás soutěž jako kolega, ale ještě budeme rádi na podporu, pokud se k nám budete chtít přidat jako dobrovolníci, tak mě můžete využít toho mailu a pomáhajte to vymyské Tak Tak díky. discussion part. We will just uh, prepare uh, the tables here and and the technical staff. So we will move forward. So I will ask our guests to sit sit here uh, in front. And I will check if we have uh, also Yasna among our colleagues or if she left already. Ah, yes, you are here. Great. I'll just check the speakers. Yes. Yasna, can you talk, please? Hopefully you can hear me. Is everything okay? Everything is okay this, this, this time, so great. Right, right. Uh, and... Uh, Já vím, ale uh, jenom aby tam byli vidět i ostatní, protože Martin je moc vzadu. Tak. OK. Uh -huh. Přísuňte ke stolečku, Martin. So, 
Yeah, yes, now you are like a pedal among us here. Nice. Okay, uh, so um, I'll stop sharing uh, so that you can see uh, us. Uh, please, those who are, or yes, now maybe you can you can uh, uh, confirm that you can see uh, our guests. Yes, I can see the guests and panelists. Okay, great, perfect. Uh, once more, I uh, I repeat, if you want, if you have any questions, you can type them in uh, the chat, and we will check it later uh, at the end of this discussion. So uh, I will take my notes and. We can start. Please, uh, our guests here, our students, if you have any questions, also be prepared that you can ask. And now we, yeah, we are two women and three men here, Yasna. So we, uh, but we are the most powerful women in the world, right? So good, we will start. Fine. I have uh, a few questions which are maybe uh, a little bit general. Uh, you are a little bit familiar with the questions. Uh, I will uh, say in English. I will read it in Czech, so uh, so that you know what you are uh, what you are answering to. Uh, first question is uh, for Tejek uh, Kosol, and uh, uh, because you are uh, representing the social enterprise, and you mentioned that uh, we don't have so the social enterprise law or act here in the Czech Republic yet. So uh, how did you what what did you rely on? If we don't have any laws, if we, we, we don't have any acts regulating this, so uh, how is it? What, what was the situation in the Czech Republic? How did you cope with this? Um, the situation is that, uh, like I said, that we have about 3,800 people on the street. Maybe a little bit allowed. I'm not sure yeah. if they can hear you. Tak situace je taková, že v Česku je, jak jsem říkal, 3800 podniků na chráněný trhu práce a ty jsou regulovaný zákonem o zaměstnanosti. Ah, OK. So there are 3800 enterprises on the labor market, which are covered by the law or the employment law or something like that. Zhruba 180 z nich se rozhodlo, že i když mají od státu stejný příspěvek jako ten zbytek, tak budou na sebe trošku tvrdší, budou pod metodiku sociálních podniků. Protože to, že budou k sobě více striktní, tak znamená, že přinesou daleko víc svým zaměstnancům. Především třeba v oblasti psychosociální podpory. Mm -hmm. Na to nemají podstatné žádné peníze, ale oni se rozhodli, že budou třeba část zisků vracet zpátky mm -hmm. a že budou rozvíjet tu psychosociální podporu. Když se už takto rozhodli, začali naplňovat principy sociálního podnikání, tak my chceme vlastně, aby uh, my sociální podniky měli nějakou oporu uh, v legislativě. Uh, rozhodně doporučuji uh, web České pomočka sociální pomočka podnikání uh, protože ten zpravuje uh, Ministerstvo práce a sociálních věcí, uh, kde uh, se třeba najdeme i metodiku, uh, jak by měl sociální podnik vypadat. A uh, na, tady vlastně na tom webu ministerstva je i adresář a vy se můžete vlastně při svůj podnik přihlásit uh, do toho adresáře, že jste jakoby adresáři sociálních podniků, který zprávají jako sebe, a len musíte splňovat určitý podnik, který se mm -hmm. vlastně na tady, a to kontroluje na to sebe. So there is a website, which is controlled by the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs, and there are these uh, rules uh, defined, and you can register in this kind of form. Uh, yeah. A z našeho pohledu teda ta infrastruktura je vlastně na to postavená, uh, ale je potřeba uh, to jí dostat do uh, legislativy. To 
dlouhodobě takový, že třeba v tom mimo jiný hodně zaostáváme za Evropou, kde základní sociální hodně třeba na Slovensku už, už dávno mají. A ten důvod, proč chceme tu legislativu, je takový, že třeba pomůžeme samozprávě nebo vůbec ministerstvům a podobně definovat, kdo je sociální podnik a třeba tak udělat snažší přístup k veřejným zakázkám. Yeah, so uh, we are far behind Europe in these terms. Uh, for example, just Slovakia, which is our neighbor, uh, they already have uh, the Social Enterprise Act. Uh, we don't have it, and uh, they want to uh, help the municipalities and uh, the, uh, other regional uh, or, uh, organizations or support to define who is actually the social enterprise. A v neposlední řadě ten zákon může přinést i přinést i takzvané za tzv. integrovaný sociální podnik, který by pomáhal nejenom s zdravotně handicapovanou, ale i lidem ze sociálního handicapu. Nebo jsou třeba lidé bez domova, bývalí vězni, nebo dlouho se bývalí lidé na práci. Yeah, and uh, the other, other thing is, or the least, but, uh, the, uh, least but the last, uh, it can help uh, to define so called, uh, so -called inclusive uh, social enterprise. Uh, which is not helping only disabled people, but also people who are in disadvantage on the labor market in terms of social and social terms. Yeah, uh, actually what I know, uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, there are two groups of social enterprises. So one group are uh, social enterprises, uh, who are just giving back their profit to the organization for the social purpose, that they are fulfilling something uh, which is uh, in the society, uh, what the society needs, uh, what is what is uh, just needed in the society, but they don't uh, employ uh, disabled people or other people from disadvantaged groups. They are just for social purpose. And the second group are these inclusive social organizations or social enterprises who are including uh, this, uh, this amount of people on the labor market. And uh, we are now mostly, or you are the inclusive social enterprise, as I understand. This group, uh, I think that we have to do it again. A to na typy podniků, které jsou v Evropě už zabělí, jako je třeba sociální, envi, environmentální sociální podnik a nebo sociální podnik zemědělství. Aha, they want to grow to this area to uh, for uh, two other parts, which is in Europe quite uh, quite common. It's the environmental social enterprise and then the other type was uh, was sorry. Sociální podnik zemědělství. Ah, okay, social enterprise and agriculture. Yes, I have a question for you. How is it in Bosnia? Uh, is it the same situation? Do you already have a, a, a law or act uh, in social enterprise or more inclusive organizations uh, which they can respect? Do you know? Are you aware of this? Well, the situation is pretty much similar as in Czech Republic. We still do not have the strategy or the law for social entrepreneurship. Um, the so strategy for social inclusion has been developed, which basically represents the elaboration of strategic goals for social inclusion from the overall strategy for development of Bosnia and Herzegovina. But since in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we have very complex political and administrative structure the implementation of the strategy is lagging behind. Um, one of the measures of this social inclusion strategy is basically to develop a social support system for entrepreneurship. And uh, the strategy itself states that uh, for the um, inclusion of socially excluded categories, it is important to have um, uh, support for social entrepreneurship as one of the forms of employment for people for minority groups. And uh, it is important to emphasize that this type of support should be developed primarily at, at the local levels of government, as well as, as well as on the other levels where social entrepreneurship can be established and, and can take place. Um, the system support should probably include measures uh, in order to simplify, for example, administrative services, uh, financial aid and support and relief. However, uh, the real effects and work on these issues are still not yet evident. Uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina has adopted the strategy for development of small and medium enterprises. However, it's not being implemented at full intensity, nor has been this harmonization with the EU uh, documents have been established as a system for monitoring key indicators for SME development. And this, uh, this also uh, has negative effects on social entrepreneurship. Um, the, some of the main causes of this condition, particularly 
a difficult condition in the domain of social entrepreneurship is insufficient knowledge of the concept itself uh, and opportunities that open up through social entrepreneurship. People are not aware, so we still need awareness campaigns on what actually social entrepreneurship is and what are the social effects of social entrepreneurship. Again, there is a lack of adequate uh, institutional and legal framework because we are missing the law on social entrepreneurship that would basically regulate and uh, encourage social entrepreneurship activities. Uh, of course, there are some sporadic programs and initiatives for employment through social entrepreneurship initiatives. However, there is a lack of startup capital and also lack of necessary knowledge and skills uh, that uh, can enable people to start up businesses that are in the domain of social entrepreneurship. Uh, thank you for, for your answer. Uh, so we don't have an act. On the other hand, the question is now for all of you. Uh, uh, what is actually, uh, what, what can you use from the state support and maybe also from the European Union support? Uh, if there are any funds or any resources, uh, and so what are you using? Maybe we can start with this area. No, this is not good. Yeah, as we see in your presentation, 100% from your own resources, so you are not using anything. But uh, are there any options? Presentation here, the whole, every day, like this. Yeah, I mean, for the state support, like at your own staff, you can get the taxable, the taxable, the taxable. No, not at all. Nedávno jsem se snažil získat nějakou finanční podporu na jeden náš projekt, který podporuje našu hlavu aktivitu, ten bude celá Vatuška mm -hmm. Yeah, they wanted to get uh, financial resources uh, for a special project that they have, uh, a backpacking project. A, a jsme v situaci, kdy máme na sběraní sedma podpůsobů, které chceme poslat do Malavy. Sedmá. They are in a situation where they have 7,500 uh, backpacks uh, with yeah, full with the with the supplementary service for children to school. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, during the COVID situation, the costs uh, for transport are at least three times higher than we can. Znamená, že kontajner, který před kromě rokmi a s dvomi rokmi stál ta přeprava kontajnerů z toho tisícko, tak teda je to minimální místo. Mm -hmm. Which means that uh, the transportation costs were approximately 100,000 Czech crowns and now it is uh, at least 300,000 Czech crowns. A kontaktoval jsem ministerstvo zahraničních věcí, kde jsem se dozvěděl, že před uh, rokom 20, 20, 20 uh, také to projekty bylo možné Podporit finančně. Mm -hmm. And uh, they contacted uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, because they found out that in uh, 2020 it was possible to finance such project projects. Čiže bylo možné na žádost získat finanční podporu. Mm -hmm. So to get the finance, financial, financial resources uh, on request. A v roku 2020 to funguje na výzvu, to znamená iniciativu na ministerstvo a treba sa zmestiť do jeho predstavy. Yeah, but from 2020, uh, now it uh, works on uh, the calls. So there are calls uh, for, for this support and you need to fit in the rules which uh, they call. Tento pokus, a teda tento pokus sme urobili z toho prostého dôvodu, že zrovna v tejto kríze s Ukrajinou sme prišli od, ale sme menej viditeľní. Mm -hmm. sponsorov, mm -hmm. They approach this way uh, now because of the Ukraine crisis, because now they are less visible than they used to be. Takže zatiaľ sme nezískali zdroje mm -hmm. na so, financovanie so, mm -hmm. toho mm -hmm. uh, So they don't, uh, they, they haven't get uh, any financial resources yet, but they are waiting, uh, maybe they get some support. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe Martin? Uh, 
Oh, so they get the financial uh, support uh, from the individual donations uh, or, or subsidies from the uh, South Arabian region uh, and from the uh, municipality? Right. A jako samozřejmě jsou nějaké možnosti grantů, třeba ČES byla nadační jak program, který chtěl dožádat té kolegy, co je nějaký přístrojek nebo nějaký dárat, tak třeba byla taky možnosti. So there are possibilities to get some grants, uh, for example, ČES company uh, is uh, offering some kind of support this way. Mm-hmm. Okay. My použit program využíváme právě za té základ zbezpečnosti přístrojek na chráněné pracu. Místo, mm-hmm. vlastně kryje veškeré náklady s uh, péčí o uh, naše zaměstnance, kterou jsme je našli, aby jsme dělali vlastně nějaké školení a uh, integrovali je vlastně do mm-hmm. činnosti. So based on the Labor Act, uh, they have a special contribution, a special fee, which they get from the ministry uh, for the job positions, uh, which are meant for the, for the disabled or for the, it's only for disabled people, if they don't know what else that can be Uh, pak je samozřejmě spousta uh, podpor, protože uh, vychází z Evropské unie, kde už jsou sociální podniky, tak se snaží u nás vlastně uh, podporovat stát uh, sociální podniky. Je tam třeba bezkušná uh, půjčka od Českomaské uh, rozvoje banky, ale tohle jsou zrovna tak strašně byrokraticky složitý věci, že třeba na zdrav 8 měsíců práce dokládání něčeho. A, a nakonec vlastně, že se mají nešlo ta byrokracie v tomhle tomu je šílená a kvůli tomu vlastně jiný věci než to je We will face the barriers in the next question. Uh, then you mentioned the bureaucracy, which is connected with, all, uh, with these grants and with the subsidies, that there are some uh, possibilities how to get the financial resources. However, the bureaucracy is so, uh, so bad that uh, the effect is that they're all zero from, from this point. Můžu třeba ještě dodal to, že to, co je zase to velmi běžná věc, že jsou určitý zakázky státní nebo samozprávy vyčleněny na tzv. Vlastně společenský odpovědný zadávání zakázek, tak u nás už to sice je v legislativě, ale tím, že nejsou pod legislativou vlastně ty sociální podniky zakmeštěny, tak se bojí třeba často ty starostové a podobně dát nějaký působí boj sociální podniky. Mm-hmm. aby získal tu společenský rukoj od zakázku, mm-hmm. protože se to vyšel bolí, že něco pokazí mm-hmm. a budou třeba se mm-hmm. Yeah, there could be uh, some possibilities in the public procurement, uh, such as in the European or in Europe, it already works and exists, that uh, you can, you can, uh, you can uh, ask for, not to social enterprise, but, but you can, uh, you can uh, put to the condition that you want uh, that disabled people are working on this, uh, on this uh, product or something like that. But many uh, people from the municipalities or other people who are asking from the, or who are, who are uh, in the public procurement process, they are afraid of asking these conditions or these terms because they are afraid that they won't be financed or, they, uh, or that, that it is a mistake, that uh, it could be discrimination, right? Uh, I have to say that we face the same situation uh, that uh, uh, I was uh, wondering if it is possible to um, get, uh, let's say, in a, a university, we would like to have our um, promotional materials or other stuff, uh, let's say, socially or uh, environmentally sustainable, but uh, we used to have the main terms, main conditions for the price. Right, so the lowest price. Now we don't, we are not in this situation anymore. But a lot of people are afraid that if they do anything else but price, if they if they ask for better conditions uh, for um, people who are disabled working on this and so on, that it, uh, it would be a mistake and they, uh, they the finances could be cut or something like that. There might be a problem with discrimination, or with corruption, or something else. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, uh, how is it in, uh, in Bosnia, the situation of non-profit organizations? I'm not sure if you are aware also of this uh, situation, because I know you are more into the, uh, these inclusive, uh, inclusive uh, organizations. But is there any, uh, are there any support, uh, subsidies, or um, how is it, how, how, they, how they are financed uh, in Bosnia? Do you have knowledge about this? 
Well, when we are talking about government, uh, I have to underline that social entrepreneurship uh, somehow moves between the public, the private and civil sector. And of course, governments at all levels in Bosnia and Herzegovina definitely have a motive to contribute to development of social entrepreneurship because uh, regardless, apart from, from legal framework, they also have the interest to invest in social entrepreneurship in, a, in order to address the social issues which are present in Bosnia and Herzegovina, such as social inequality, poverty, inequality, etc. So the state always has the interest in solving the problem uh, in other way, uh, apart from, from legal framework. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, Bosnia and Herzegovina is not a part of EU, so we have difficulties accessing international funds. So basically, everything that is possible is to uh, get to the um, international donors, such as international organizations that are support, supporting the efforts in the social inclusion domain. But unfortunately, all these initiatives are not systemic because the state and the governments at different levels of administration have to have a clear vision about what social entrepreneurship is, uh, how uh, social inclusive organizations should be developed and how to incentivize organizations uh, from the public uh, private sector to employ people from minority groups. Uh, when we are talking about legislation in Bosnia and Herzegovina, although we do not have a law for social entrepreneurship regulating that particular area, I have to underline that it's very important that we have a uh, law on employment of persons with disabilities. And as far as I can hear in Czech Republic, also uh, companies are incentivized to employ persons with disabilities uh, on, in full-time full jobs. Uh, uh, furthermore, companies are obliged to do so, and unless they are unable to employ persons with disabilities, they have to invest a certain financial amount, which corresponds with the number of people who are employed in that organization, and that financial funds are then transferred to special funds that is uh, basically focused on uh, developing the policies and opportunities for people with disabilities in terms of their employment. Other than that, there are no uh, efforts from the government. They are very sporadic uh, support initiatives to um, social, social entrepreneurship. And I believe that unless we are more committed to developing the proper legal framework, these issues with social entrepreneurship and the efficiency of the social entrepreneurship are under the question mark. I think the situation is very similar to what we have in Czech Republic. Uh, if, uh, if uh, I'm correct, uh, here we have a situation that uh, the, the, the large organizations uh, also have the option to choose uh, whether they pay a certain fee uh, in the state budget, I would say, or they, uh, or they um, can choose that they will, uh, let's say, use your service, uh, uh, that they will, they will choose a social enterprise uh, doing some job for them, let's say, instead of giving the money to the, to the state's budget, right? Uh, uh, and uh, I suppose that there was the third option, or they can employ themselves, uh, these uh, people. Which in Czech Republic is quite a tricky situation because sometimes the companies are doing this the uh, wrong way. Because they uh, they choose a job position, they create a job position for disabled or other disadvantaged groups. But they are just they, they have it only on paper. Yeah, so uh suppose that they to my So uh, this is this is not correct. Uh, they are just having this uh, just to ensure that they have someone, but it's actually not solving anything. Yeah, they are just doing this uh, so that they don't have to pay uh, the fee to the state budget. Uh, is there any uh, any questions that is team uh if we are in a ditch about to not divide it but for in a group for me are we choosing you just because uh, they don't want to pay the the fee uh náhradní plnění je jedna z věcí která pomáhá měla pomáhá sociálním podnikům tomu aby byly atraktivnější třeba pro korporáty mm -hmm. uh, my se snažíme dělat to uh, aby ta spolupráce nebyla jen kvůli náhradnímu plnění, čili že 
nezaměstnává příklad, jo? Třeba ČSOB je obrovská banka, která by při svým počtu měla mít 4% a vlastně nezaměstnání v konceptu konceptu, respektive v zemi. Takže by měla mít třeba nějakých 300-400, což není možný z různých důvodů, je to různý po celé republice, prostě nemá, nemá třeba bez barikadů, takže má možnosti vlastně půjci je zaměstnat nebo zaplatit ten ekvivalent. A v podání třeba takhle velkých bank, to znamená odebírat, jakoby, důplat, odebírat zboží nebo služby v hodnotě třeba desítek milionů korun ročně. Mm-hmm. Uh, OK, yeah, so uh, if we are talking about, uh, for example, uh, the banks, uh, banking sector, because they are really large organizations, and uh, they can choose whether they uh, employ so many people, which is 4% of their employment has to be uh, from these advanced groups, which means uh, around 300, 400 uh, thousand employees, which is really great number, uh, sorry, 300 or 400 employees, which is a great number. So they want to choose uh, your um, enterprise, uh, and in this amount uh, of money, they uh, take your goods or service. Not only you, but I mean generally the social enterprise. And unfortunately, it happens that there are some workers from the field of work that are basically selling the goods to the workers. They don't create the jobs for the workers. A classic example is, for example, the company Activa, the Activa Kancelářská. They have a lot of work on their own web. Napsaný, že donutila nás k tomu konkurence, dělají to všichni, takže i u nás si můžete nakoupit v režimu náhradního hodinu. A fakticky se jenom nakoupí kancelářský papír, já si to představuji, takže přijede kamion, hodí to někam na, na palety, tam stojí třeba jedna OZP, který udělá ten fajku, hodí se to jinam a jsou tam, jako, že tam je zaměstnání nebo sluven, třeba zaměstnání OZP a dá se to do banky, jo? nebo do jakéhokoliv korporátu. Mm-hmm. Tak vzniká náhradní ale nemá přidanou hodnotu. Yeah, uh, they are facing problem with the with the um, uh, with this service. Uh, that to, some companies are offering this service that you can use our services uh, instead of paying the fee, as uh, I mentioned. Uh, but it's like overselling this kind of service. Uh, which means that uh, there is a certain company, which we won't name it right now, but there is a certain company, they uh, are proud of it because they have it on their website, that uh, they offer you uh, to buy a paper uh, in this certain amount to fit in a course, let's say. Uh, so you get the paper, there is one disabled people, for example, you have a check that you employ disabled people or to service from disabled people, and uh, it's done. A to je jedna z věcí, na které momentálně teda už pracuje Ministerstvo práce a sociálních věcí taky. A i my otevíráme naše skupina sociálních podniků, která pracuje jednak na sociálním zákoně, tak i na, na to, jak by měla vypadat podoba náhradního podniku s přídavou hodnotou. Yeah, that's what they are working on as well. Uh, they would like to have this kind of service with added value, not without this added value. Um, okay, a question for all of you. Uh, where do you see any limitations or barriers uh, in your uh, in your area? Do you see any checkage barriers in your area? Do you see any problems or any problems you face? Tak kombinovat doba na svoji způsobnost řečila naše aktivity v teréně, právě ta komunikace s dobrovolníky a aktivity dobrovolníků, které nebyly přirozené, znemožněné. Yeah, uh, the, the COVID situation complicated the whole stuff. Uh, of course, in turn, the, the voluntary uh, service was limited. Uh, Každopádně invenci nejsou mezi klademe, uh, takže jich jsme hodně do online. A napriek tým komplikáciám s COVID-om my sme tie objemy dárov z roka na rok ďalej zvyšovali. Takže ja veľmi verím, že 
že to tej povinnosti a o tom zápale každého presvedčení, že chce k tomu projektu byť na pomocný a vždy sa nájde cesta a spôsob. Yeah, despite of the difficulties, uh, they went online and despite of the difficulties, they were able to increase even the amount of money uh, that's for their uh, organization now, which is uh, really great. I have to say from my own experience, because we have a fair market here uh, on an, uh, at our university, uh, students are organizing this market and uh, we used to have it offline or only here at this university. The amount of money was at the beginning, of one, uh, let's say 15,000 Czech crowns. Then after certain years, let's say six years, seven years, we went to the number of 100 uh, Czech crowns, uh, 100,000 Czech crowns. And uh, the COVID situation, um, it uh, made us to do it uh, online as well. Uh, and my husband said, don't worry, it will be even better. I said, no, it's not possible uh, because people are all, all already, uh, let's say, over fed with this you know, online information and so on. And yet, we uh, this year we were 267 or more than 267,000 Czech crowns uh, because of the online version. So it has both positives and negatives. Uh, so um, sometimes uh, the positives are fine on this. And thanks to the COVID situation, we are now hybrid. Uh, we are online today as well. Um, Martin, um, maybe uh, do you face maybe from yours uh, as a student? You know, you're a student, you're a volunteer. Do you see any problems or any barriers, any limits? Když nějaké ty bariéry, problémy, které musí že už to se řekne, že dobrý moment, to se třeba i toho dobrý moment třeba učit. Uh, probably lack of time, yeah, as, as uh, most of us probably, I will say. Okay, so my třeba prostor ještě asi znovu. Určitě. Yeah, uh, because I have a lot of questions here, but today, uh, because of the translation and all the stuff, technical stuff, well, we don't have so much time. So, uh, now I'll give the space for your questions. Uh, maybe we can also check in the chat if uh, there are any questions. So, do you have a special question for our guests? The question I will just translate for those who are online. Uh, in uh, Polytrick, uh, since are, uh, are you employing only people with uh, physical uh, dis disability or also mental disability? Uh, ze zdravotním handicapem ve smyslu třeba pohyby na poruchy nějakého třeba pohybového aparátu, ale v opravdu velké míře je, jsou tyhle ty handicapy doprovázeny i nějakýma duševníma problémama, ale samozřejmě, že člověk je zdí zdravý a je už omezený, není zvyk, jako byl, tak si tam musíme pracovat, i když má, má třeba invalidní důchod na, na to, že má třeba špatnou páteř, tak přesto ta práce by s nimi je hodně zásadní i v rámci té ty ruševní a duševní mm -hmm. So, uh, most of them are physically uh, disabled, however, uh, most of these people are, are having uh, mental issues as well, which they need to face, and uh, they need to work with them complex. No, dobrovolníci České republiky se snaží a pan realizovat, to znamená získávat prostředky na financování naše pomoci v programových krajinách. A to aktivitami, které jsou jim blízké. Člověk, který má koníček hrát na hudobný nástroj, může s kamarádmi urobit nějaký charitativní koncert, vyzběrat nějaké finanční prostředky, které pokutují na účet Mezinus. Športovci můžou udělat nějaký športový turnaj a na tom turnaji prostě zase nahajovat nějaké prostředky, napandrajzovat nějaké finanční prostředky zo vstupného. Prostě těch možností je veľa. Každý, jak to cítí, čo, čo môže dať do placu, čo môže ponúknuť, 
tak tým môže získať finančné prostriedky na tento projekt. Takže oni treba naši z Česka treba nenajde veľmi tých malých, nebo tak, ktorí tam všetko pracovať. Nie, nie, nie. Yeah, the question was if the volunteers from Czech Republic and other donation states, if they are also working in Malaví or in these supporting countries, Uh, or we, uh, how they are actually supporting uh, this project. Uh, the answer was that they are uh, they are supporting it uh, through fundraising activities, such as if you are a good musician, you can uh, organize a uh, musical concert and uh, get uh, the money that you get, you can invest or you can you can send to Mary's Meals and support the children. Or if you are a good uh, football player, soccer player, you can organize events and uh, the money uh, from this uh, sent to Mary's Meals. So this is how you can a čo by som tomu dodal? To, že v dnešnej dobe napríklad e, sa snažíme získať dobrovoľníkov, ktorí by nám pomohli v našej dieťaní, čiže je to e, nefinančná pomoc, ale veľmi dôležitá preto, aby sme mohli naše informácie e, dostávať čo najširšie. Uh, yeah, currently they are seeking for uh, volunteers who can help them with social media. This is a uh, financial support, however, it helps them to uh, get this uh, uh, awardance of Planetics Meals to grow their uh, public. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what else you ask? Jestli um, teda jste zmínil, že tam zpráváte a mě ty lidi se s fyzickým postižením, ale jestli tam zpráváte třeba i lidi s psychickým postižením a jestli třeba ty pracovní pozice jsou proto být uh, zaměřeny, že to chápu, že tam mluví se k tomu, že by to mě stresy, ty a všechny náročné, ty psychické nemocí, to je to jak mluví a pokud Mm -hmm. uh, that was a question for us, Daniel. If you employ also uh, mentally uh, mentally disabled people, if you do so, if the job positions are especially uh, accommodated to, uh, to this uh, requirement, and if you don't, do uh, if you have it in your plan? Do uh, konce i ty pozice, které my nabízíme a obsazujeme, tak jsou opravdu od těch jednoduchých, když to řeknu úplně hloupě, že stát kopíruje, že to si jen zakopírovat nebo zadává do systému, až po opravdu takový náročnější, co tam má třeba odbavovat složité reklamace, což bude třeba rovnou pod ombudsmanem banky. A v, takže tam i v podstatě všude je prostor, i pro lidi. Máme mezi sebou ty kolegy, který není teda úplně většiná polovina ale třeba nějaký 10%, 15% učitelů, kteří mají psychické problémy, nezávisle na jejich zdravotním stavu, ale takže máme, můžeme to uspůsobit i těmto. A o to větší je tam potom ten support té psychosociální podpory. Hlídáme si, aby se nám ten člověk třeba jako nezhroutil, že by už má možná trošku ty znaky, každý má individuální. Tak uh, už třeba jakoby o to víc pak pracujeme s nějakými svídej nebo s poradenstvím, takže speciálně na to lidi dáme větší pozor, aby se nedostali třeba k nějakému uh, vyhoření nebo nějakým pozicím. Takže pracujeme na míru, jak s tou pozicí, kdo je na ní hodný, tak s tím, jak my máme pracovat s kterým typem toho, uh, toho postižení. Is it people with mental issues? Uh, it's uh, around 15 percent, and uh, you, know, you are it's much more complicated to work with them. Um, and uh, that's uh, where we have place for the for, for the psychological social support. And uh, uh, of course, uh, they are trying to create the job position uh, that it fits uh, to their mental uh, mental um, stuff. Uh, I also know that uh, it, it was quite uh, interesting to find out uh, when we were visiting uh, uh, the social enterprise for Jika for excursion. Uh, I was uh, uh, quite. Uh, we were. We are talking uh, about inclusion generally yeah, uh, in at schools, uh, workplace, and so on. And I was surprised when uh, they told me about the founder of uh, Kolinji. Uh, he said that most of the employees are satisfied working here for uh, this enterprise because if they are working in a regular enterprise, people are watching and they say, okay, why is it, how is it possible that you have a break right now? Yeah. Why do you, why do you need, uh, need a break? If I don't have, um, I don't have a break, I don't, I don't want it and I don't get it. And you have some special advantages. You have uh, a break now. Because the, the person who's taking pills, who has uh, some, some health issues, 
They need break, let's say, after four hours or three hours. And the break has to be one hour, two hours. They're usually normal and enterprise. They can to get it. And uh, it's, uh, if they get it, they, uh, they are in the eyes of the others, like why he has these kind of advantages and, uh, and so on. So I know that they really appreciate that if they complain or if they have the same issues as their colleagues, they feel much more uh, welcome in the company and they, they know that they can share their problems with the others, which is also another, another benefit of this. Ještě bych rád reagoval dál, co jsem řekl v té prezentaci, že my jsme všichni jdeme tou cestou, že se nesnažíme udělat jako jedno místo, kde jsme udělali zakázku, kde pracují v naprosté většině handicapovaní, ale vytvořili jsme tzv. CSR týmy a ty fungují přímo vlastně v pronajatém našem místě, který máme v té bance. Když si představit opravdu obrovský open space, tak my tam máme pro nějaký určitý prostor, kde jsou ty naši zaměstnanci, ale jenom se zvednou od toho stolu, prostě, tak oni uh, můžou si dostat komunikace s dalšíma prostě s desítkama stovkama zaměstnanců té banky, různý pozic, různý vlastně i třídy, když to tak mluvě, a, a tudíž vlastně dochází k té jako integraci. My jsme uh, udělali tu věc, že jsme měli tady úplně polcem, to znamená se byli, kde jsme měli ve většině jakoby OZP, ale říkali jsme si, my jsme to měli dělat jinak, protože to vlastně měli opočit. A to je OZP měli vlastně v menšině v tom kolektivu, který je velký. Yeah, now they are, they are trying to do it also uh, in the way of inclusion, that uh, in the bank there is a spe special sector, special landed area for CSR College, for the employees of, uh, of CSR College, but in the break they can interact with the other people from the, from the company, uh, they can uh, communicate, change ideas and other stuff, so this is uh, the way of inclusion, how they, uh, but they still feel safe that they are in their safe sense. Tam dochází pak takovým jakoby, uh, fajn věcem, že uh, se postaví uh, budova, která jako se za miliardu uh, vyrává různé environmentální ceny, uh, že je to zdaně to všechno a pak zjistíme, že když máme zaměstnance, který má asistentský obsah, obsah jako asistenta, tak se musí změnit vlastně až na před, představenstvu pravidla a tak bez mohlo být. <laughs> Takže vlastně my měníme i pravidla pro, pro samotnou třeba Yeah, sometimes they even have to change rules in the bank because uh, the dogs are not allowed to go in the bank. But because you have assistance dogs that you need to come out, to come in the bank, so they sometimes need the permission of the highest positions and to change the rules for them. It's very interesting. Uh, yeah, we got to your task, Zika. If you can see the other people who are doing the run, that is the big thing from the market. Já, já nevím, jestli jste to říkal, jste to jen dotkali, jestli mě se někdo nechce, ale jestli se jako vybíráte sami, nebo oni jako, on vás osloví, nebo je třeba někdo doporučí, že hele, tam to je člověka, který by jako potřeboval pomoc, nebo jako na jakým základě se rozhodujete, komu ten každý roční pomůžete, nebo třeba jaký bude téma toho pěhu, prostě s tím, že každý rok je to něco jiného. Je to vlastně formátně, Jo, tak zhruba v tu dobu vlastně všechno akcí, to znamená v listopadu, se tady není výzva, kde se tady někdo přihlásí, nebo tam někdo přihlásí, tam někdo přihlásí třeba kamarádi, protože někdo třeba tu pomoc sám nechce, to znamená prostě je potřeba je k tomu jako dokoupat do ruka. A vlastně prochází to takovým procesem, že naše kolegyně, která se pohybuje nějakých 15 let právě jako v karizatní jako sféře, práci s autistí a podobně, tak objíždí každou tu rodinu třeba několikrát, dvakrát, třikrát a zjišťuje vlastně ty potřeby té rodiny, jestli to pak skutečně čí třeba pro to dítě nebo pro toho dospěláka, tak aby to nějakým způsobem nám zájem ta spolupráce dávala smysl, protože pak se snažíme o to, aby uh, ten sen se splnil pak tomu, tomu člověku, že to máme tak pocicení na základě jako faktur, aby to bylo co nejvíc na spánku. Yeah, there is uh, approximately uh, half year before the event, there is a call uh, given by uh, by person and they, uh, they uh, the people can uh, register in this call, they can register themselves or their friends, their families. And after this call, they check the application forms and uh, they are also uh, visiting the families and checking uh, how the situation looks like if they really want it for this uh, child or this uh, adult. Uh, if the support is really going to that concrete person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 
So if you are actively uh, looking for other enterprises to work with, and uh, how, how hard is it uh, to work with them? Jsem hodně zmiňoval ČSOB z toho důvodu, že tam jsme ve spolupráci začínali a je vlastně největší. Máme i další klienty a k tomu navazování je to vždycky nejtěžší, jsou ty, nejtěžší je říkám, ten druhý krok, protože když se bavíte na představenstvu, různých korporátů a podobně, tak jim se samozřejmě líbí, že si je sále strašně sexy. A pak se dostanete k těm, pak se dostanete k těm manželům, který už tak úplně nejsou korektní z toho, že mají svoje cíle. A teď se bojí, že tam najde deset řadelů hodičkářů, kteří budou prostě pomalu. Takže v tomhle musíme opravdu odbourávat ty zažití schémata a to, že handicapovaní jsou pomalí, že mají velkou mocnost a že to je i brzy. A to odbouráme jedně tak, že tu spolupráci na začátku otevíráme v malém týmu, třeba třech, čtyři lidí, kde my musíme opravdu udělat se vypnout tak, aby jsme už tam dodali na ten start úplně to nejlepší z nejlepšího, co, co lze. Musíme být hodně přesvědčení o tom, a abychom je přesvědčili, že nejsou, že nejsou oma. Protože tohle je a že můžou být přínosem. Že tohle ta spolupráce funguje, jenom když je to vin, vin, vin. Vin pro nás sociální podmínky, pro hendifikovaný, že má práci, a vin pro korporát, že ho nikdo vlastně nezdržuje, netahá a uh, yeah, so, uh... I think I translated out the question or not, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, I can translate the, the answer. Uh, if you have more enterprises, yeah, I, I said it. So, uh, yes, you are working with more enterprises, but, but uh, the bank, uh, Chase of the Bank, was uh, the first one where you started. Uh, and how to get the others to be involved, uh, you will be presented uh, in front of the board. Uh, they are, uh, yeah, they are poor because it is sexy to have CSR in their companies. However, if you say to the managers then, and so you find out that there should be a lot of uh, people on the wheelchairs coming to the company, they would be slow and they would be not so good and so on. There are many prejudices, right? They would be just to explain. So uh, you have to overcome these obstacles and start with small teams, small teams of three, three people, and then the larger cooperation. Um, I know. Můžeme mít dotaz na kolegy. A ty je zároveň zůstali handicapovaní na svůj tým. Byl zájem od poměrně, poměrně velký. My hodně záleží na jakém jsme v místě. Třeba v Hradci Králové, kde máme poměrně už část těch 70 míst. Tak uh, tam už až tolik ne, tam jsme za ty čtyři roky nějak trošku vytěžili, uh, ale třeba v Praze, kde máme těch míst 30, tak když dáme inzera, tak je tam opravdu uh, ten zájem pořád jiný. Uh, maybe I have one question just for you. Uh, na vás otázku, když jste se rovná, tak jste stáli třeba vysvětlávání z důvodu ve Skotsku, když jste se rovná vysvětlávání z důvodu ve Skotsku, And do you have many countries uh, incorporated in uh, many skills, not some with these staff in those companies? How is it actually with the situation with the most generous? The technology that is the staff who the boy is going to be to money, which is kind of like how the other countries are per, uh, perceived Czech Republic. Uh, are we generous, generous state uh, or not? How is the situation? No, Czech Republic has a stomach that is a pretty big of his appeal to talk about it because I'm not kdy už běžal 16 rokov v nebo velkých krajinách, jako se Spojené štáty, Británie, 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 Kanada, Austrálie, Německo, Rakousko. A myslím si, že můžeme našu organizaci pochválit, že jsme se tam jako taky žralo do tohoto prostředí, a to jiný právě tím naším takým biznis pohledem na celou věc. Máme v porovnání s jinými krajinami raketový nárast finanční podpory tohoto projektu a hralo, teda tlačíme na pilu, aj v případě Rakuska, aj v Německu trošku dýcháme na záda, Španělsko to jsme předvedli, Francouzsko je tu za nami, ale je to skutečně o tom lokálním přístupu, protože někde jsou to dobrovolníci s dobrým srdcem, ale nevedí, jak v té marketingu. 
nebo komunikovat tím prostředím, někdy to stojí na jednom dvou velkých sponzorů, to je jako věc, že vždycky bude velmi riskantné, když máte postavený tento jedna v jednom sponzoru. Yeah, so uh, it is very diverse in every country. It depends on where it stands on to uh, to philanthropes or to sponsors uh, or donors. On the other hand, uh, there are countries which are really good. We belong there before uh, or this four years ago. We started, and now we are uh, increasing the numbers uh, in really high manner. So we are really good. We can be proud as Czechs. Uh, I know that people, a lot of people are suspicious. Uh, you know, the people who are giving are afraid of giving money to certain NGOs. Uh, would you have any advice? Měl byste nějakou třeba radu, uh, jak vlastně, uh, když se rozhoduje, tak spousta neziskových organizací, there are many NGOs, non-profit organizations, how can I be sure, jak můžu být si jako jistý, jak to můžu pověřit, can I somehow verify that this organization, this special organization is okay, I can invest the money here, I can send the money here. Jako, jak si to můžu ověřit, nebo uh, prostě spolehnout se na to, že opravdu ty peníze půjdou tam, kam mnou. Při spousta lidí se bojí prostě poslat na nějakou nezistu. Tak uh, jedním z takových no, vatnusových papíriků, takových základních, je určitě zjistit si, že či ta organizace má skutečně a dají než věru. Jsou public financial collection, yeah, so some, some, some maybe a transparency account even, yeah, if they have. U transparentného účtu, například v našem případě, my jsme začínali s, s myšlenkou z realizací transparentního účtu, ale po sondování s jacemi potenciálními a potenciálními dárcami jsme si povedali, že to nebude šťastné, protože mnohí nechci být vidění, že Yes, uh-huh. yeah, because they could be attacked by other organizations that you gave there, please give us as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Transparentnost se snažíme právě dokladovat tím, že si našu účtovnou záležitku každoročně dáváme auditovat. So there is a there is independent audit of, uh, of their accountancy system, of their, of their accounting. Yeah. Uh, zrovna zajtra jde na krajský úrad do Hrvánského kraja uh, odozdat vyučtování verejné zvěrky, mm-hmm. které je každoročně až i striktnější a striktnější požadované. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so tomorrow he's going actually to give the accounting documents. Asi tak. Uh-huh. Yeah, so check uh, whatever information possible about it, maybe some history if you want. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, because I know that our time is uh, already off. Um, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your participation today or our guests. Uh, today uh, the whole uh, event uh, was recorded, so you can find it uh, on our YouTube channel uh, CSR Mendel. Uh, so uh, you are free uh, to uh, to share this thing. I will send you uh, send you the videos. So you can you can share it and uh, thank you for your participation today and see you in two weeks uh, at uh, another event which we have next time we'll be in Czech language uh, and we have other special guests from uh, uh, from enterprises which are socially responsible small and medium one and the large ones so thank you very much and once more I thank you.